Well, hello and welcome to Limerick in Ireland for coverage of the World Archery Youth Championships for 2023. We are on day three of our coverage and we are moving today to teams competition in recurve. We will have the bronze and gold medal matches in both the under 18 age category and the under 21 category in this session. Today's big challenge for the archers is going to be the wind. It is the strongest it's been over the past three days. We are averaging gusts of around 60 kilometres an hour at the moment uh, with the average temperature around 30 kilometres an hour. That's eight metres, more than eight metres a second. So it's going to be very challenging for the archers today. However, the rain which we saw yesterday uh, is not expected to be as fierce today. There is still a chance of rain of around five to 10% as we move through the afternoon, but it's certainly not going or not forecast to be the torrential downpours that we had yesterday. Glenn Lama is my name and it's a great pleasure to welcome in Gabby Schlosser for the commentary today, who's going to be our expert analyst. Hi, Gabby. Hello, hello. I'm happy to be back here with you to see what the finals are going to bring today. Yes, indeed. And we're going to start off with the under 18 women's competition. We're going to have the gold medal match coming up a little later between Korea and China. But first up, we've got the bronze medal match between France and Chinese Taipei. France uh, have uh, had wins over Israel and Japan in a shoot-off in their quarter-final. They were beaten comfortably by Korea in the semi-finals by six points to two. And they are about to play the Chinese Taipei team who have come through with wins over the Czech Republic, India, and lost to China 6-2 in the semi-finals. So, Gabby, a quick word from you about the win before we get the introductions. It's going to be tough. Yeah, it is indeed going to be tough. To be honest, I thought the wind was a little bit, oh, the weather was a little bit better than uh, yesterday. We saw higher scores uh, all the way through the gold medal matches, and I'm sorry, the medal matches. Um, but now I see the conditions, and it looks a little bit difficult. I hope these uh, young archers. Um, can manage the wind and do the best they can. French team just been introduced to the team. So the match about to start. Should be a good battle, this one. All these matches should be very good as we go through the day today. But how will they handle that wind? That is going to be the challenge for the archers today. Good team spirit in that Chinese Taipei lineup. And the wind is coming from the south which means by and large the breeze is coming from behind the arches the good support as you can hear for the the athletes today as chinese taipei are going to get things underway and it's going to be fong yu zhu to start off these arches are shooting from 60 meters We saw Fong in the mixed teams competition earlier on in the meeting. And now we get the 16-year-old Chiang Yu Tung. And she's getting a 10, which is a good start for her. The advantage of getting an arrow inside that 10 zone early to get some confidence is critical. And she did that brilliantly there. And it's... Lin with an eight to end the first rotation. So 27, not too bad from the Chinese Taipei side. Maya Tinku. 
France qualified for in fifth place for this competition. Chinese Taipei was second. Justine Selye. into the seven zone and uh, to end the rotation it's going to be Melina Tukusel, the youngest of the French archers. She's just 15. Oh, Zach grabbed the line. Very close. Very close. Being marked the nine star at the moment. After the first rotation. So back we go to Fong. It's an eight. Chiang just waiting for the wind to die down. She's got plenty of time there. 30 seconds of time in the background ticking down. The archers have on average around 20 seconds per arrow. But that breeze is really strong. And now she's going to have to have a crack. Here's Chiang. So Lin Shu Yan is going to need a big arrow here. It's gone into the nine zone. So that'll be 50 provisionally for the Chinese Taipei side. So this is within the grasp here of France to claim the first set. Even three eights will be enough. Salia, the 17 year old. Oh, there's a six. Now it becomes very challenging here for France. They can only perhaps tie the set at that start arrow earlier. But for it to have any chance to Cassell here. Needs a 10, and she's missed it. So it's going to be the Chinese Taipei team that claimed the first set. Well, Gabby, what did you make of that as that unfolded? Well, I feel like uh, Chinese Taipei started a little bit stronger than France, and we see that the Chinese um, Taipei team had uh, to wait a little bit for the wind to pass. Um, it didn't help a lot, but they still took the set. I feel like the archers need to um, just keep uh, everything control. You know, they just need to be confident in their arrows. We see as well a little bit from Chinese Taipei that their first archer started with eight, nine on the right side. Um, I feel like she uh, just need to move her side to be in the middle because she already has a group. Um, but on the French side, we see a little bit uh, arrows all over the place. I feel like uh, they just need to stay confident and like just try to make their best shot in these conditions there's nothing else you can do <laughs> yes indeed it's a uh, just got to trust yourself be true to yourself so the chinese taipei team take the first set and they lead this contest two nil at least we don't have the rain today gabby well, I feel like rain sometimes can be uh, help you a little bit as well, especially uh, when it's windy and cold. Um, I feel like uh, when it's, I prefer uh, the rain inside of the, the wind, but that's personal, you know, like every archer has like different opinions about it. In my opinion, I would like to see a little bit of rain just to make it a little bit more interesting. <laughs> Tinku with the nine to start for france she was uh, in the mixed competition they were the top seeds actually france but uh were beaten in the quarterfinals Takusel. Well, that's better from France. Three scores in the yellow. 
So three nines. I'll continue to push all the way the French team as Chinese Taipei step up to the shooting line. Fong Yu Zhu. Again, just waiting for the breeze, hoping more than anything for that breeze to die down a little bit. But at some point, you've got to go for it. Otherwise, you get shot clock pressure. You see a little bit on the Chinese Taipei side that they can wait for their arrows. That means that the three archers have a really, um, uh, really quick shot that help that gives them a, gives them a little bit of advantage. Uh, they can wait to shoot their shot. You know. Uh, Chian gets a six. She had brutal wins to deal with there. At the end of the day, you've just got to get up and do your best. Lean now to end the first rotation. You see all arrows drifting left there. That breeze really picks up. Because it may fluctuate down the course as well. And Maya Tinku, the 17-year-old, she qualified seventh for the individual. So she could be one to watch when the individuals come up in a couple of days. Pakusel. It was a grab to 10 zone. Very close. I think that might have licked the line. Yeah, I think it's a 10. I think she found her spot where to aim. Uh, her first two arrows were a little bit um, wide, you know, but now she's back in the middle. She She's doing really good. Malia Tukasel just uh, deciding to reset, and she gets an eight. So that's going to lock in a score of 52. And Chinese Taipei. Seems to be a problem here. They still have three arrows to... score here so there's some issue with the with the timing system again uh, good to see the French team good spirit in there isn't there they are uh, really enjoying themselves out there yeah I feel like at the end you the only thing you can do is to stay positive and keep fighting for um, every set you know Here you go Chinese Taipei with their last three arrows with that slight delay. And interesting to see the arrow still drifting left from their team. That means they can't win the set now, that six. Look how brutally strong the wins are right there. And that's a miss, unfortunately, there for Chiang. Really tough for her. Well, how do you make adjustments when all the arrows drift left like that? They're trying not to go left, are they, are they Gabby? But it's uh, sometimes obviously very tough for them. Yeah, this uh, end, uh, Chinese Taipei had a lot of problems with the wind. Uh, that's what you get sometimes, you know? Um, sometimes the other team uh, has problems with it and sometimes you need to work with what you have. I feel like the team from Chinese Taipei just need to stay a little bit um, easy, you know, like uh, they need to forget the arrows that they just shot and focus uh, and work with the win a little bit. Well, they're obviously really struggling to get Comfortable on the shooting line. The only thing they can do is put it behind them and move on. Gabby, how hard is that to do sometimes? Well, the matches are normally 50 minutes. I think that uh, it goes really fast. It's a little bit difficult to forget uh, the bad arrows, and you focus a lot on those ones. Um, 
but with help of your teammates and the coaches, um, you need to forget about it or try to uh, play for the team, you know? <laughs> yes. So we're locked up at two all in this match now. It's, uh, the scores there, 53-35. Scores in the first set were 50 to 47 to Chinese Taipei. So locked up at two all. Two sets to go. So we're halfway through as Chinese Taipei look to put that second set behind them. And come back. That's the beauty of the scoring system in recurve archery. You can come back from one poor arrow. There you go. That's more like it. Fong Yu Ju. Getting her first 10 of the contest. Much young, even though she missed her last arrow there. She got a 10 earlier as well. Now this is much better from Chinese Taipei. Can Lin keep it going? Oh, fantastic. Easily the best rotation the Chinese Taipei side have had so far. 29 out of 30. That's just the ticket. That's what we want to see. I feel like they forgot about last end. And that pressure goes right back on France immediately. Justine Selye. Now this is better from France. That's her second 10 on the trot. Hakusel. Wow, that wind's just died down now, Gabby. And uh, look at the archers. They're enjoying themselves all of, all of a sudden. Yeah, you can really see that the wind uh, just disappeared. <laughs> I feel like they uh, got like the first two ends a uh, really nasty wind, but now it looks like they found the middle and they are like back, back to shooting the yellow sun. Chiang. Well, that arrow could be critical in this tight set but Lin here can end with a flourish they'll still score pretty well only dropping potentially four points oh, just drops down to the nine zone so 55 that's the the best score that the Chinese Taipei team have had so far Still a chance here for France to win the set. Maya Tinku. You can hear both teams uh, walking the archers through their shot. It is uh, like a really nice support. It's uh, really nice to hear what you need to do and uh, not think a lot about it. Well done by Tinku there to reload. Celia. Oh, it's just a four. Well, that'll unfortunately sell you not comfortable that time with that release of that arrow. And that will concede the set to Chinese Taipei. What do you think happened there, Gabby? Well, I think that she wasn't ready for the shot. It looks like the wind was pushing her a little bit. Probably uh, they were a little bit uh, under pressure. Um, just because of the fact that they are waiting a little bit to shoot their arrows. Um, what can they do here? Just shoot their arrows, try to uh, be a little bit more quick. Um, yeah, there's not a lot to do. It looks really difficult, but um, I'm pretty sure that they're going to 
try to keep fighting and just try to get the best out of it. <laughs> Don't forget we've got that gold medal match coming up shortly between Korea and China. This match is four points to two in favour of Chinese Taipei. One set to go. Clearly, France need to win the set to send it to a shoot-off. If it's a tied set or Taipei, Chinese Taipei claim it, they will win the bronze medal. So that's where we are with this match. Oh, great to hear all the support on the sidelines again. Didn't get too much of that when that heavy rain started falling yesterday. So it's great to hear it again. But here we go. Fourth and final set of this bronze medal match in the recurve under 18 women's teams competition. France need to win it this set to take it to a shoot-off. France have already had a shoot-off in this competition. They have they were taken to a shoot-off in their quarter-final against Japan. They won that low-scoring shoot-off, 20 to 19. But it uh, doesn't matter how you win, it's if you win. So Celia looking to put the disappointment of that last arrow behind her. Celia does have experience on the European World or Youth Cup uh, circuit. Tinku is the most experienced. Nine. That's better. A nine scored there by Takusel. So France lock in 25 points after the first rotation. Still plenty of room here for Chinese Taipei to move forward. That looks like it's grabbed the line from Fong. Look a little bit like she wasn't prepared for the shot, but it ended uh, being a nine. That's uh, really impressive. <laughs> yes, you take that, don't you? <laughs> Chiang, Yu Tung. Nine. A solid scoring from Chinese Taipei. They certainly seem the more settled of the two teams at the moment. Had a uh, really tough second set, remember? But so far since then, they've only been out of the yellow zone once in eight arrows. Oh, that's twice now. So 25 all. It's poised, isn't it? Still a big chance for France here. With the wind continuing to challenge these archers, Maya Tinku. Celia looking to get to her happy zone. Last arrow here, big one here for Malina Tukusel. It's a seven. Well, will 48 be enough? That's the question. So 23 required. Remember, Chinese Taipei just have to tie the set, and there's 10 of them. Oh, Fong, what a time to put one in the 10 zone. Perfect. So second 10 of the contest. The fourth and all for Chinese Taipei. This is looking good now for Chinese Taipei. They need a, just a four or higher from Lin. So the target face nice and big here for Lin. And she's dropped it into the nine zone, and there is the bronze medal for Chinese Taipei. 
Well, they held it together nicely over those last two sets and deservedly win this bronze medal by six set points to two. It was really nice to see the Chinese Taipei team to be so focused and waiting for the right moment to shoot their arrows. It definitely paid off. It looks really nice what they're doing, and I'm pretty sure we will see more of them in the individual matches. They shot amazing. What a grouping. Well, the other thing, I guess, is all the other teams will be watching this wind and how they're shooting to Gabby, trying to educate themselves on how to best deal with these conditions as we move through these matches. Yeah, that's for sure. I feel like there's not a lot to learn about it. It is a little bit difficult. We, we saw that in the beginning, the arrows were landing left, then they were landing right. I feel like what you can do here is shoot strong shots and um, hope for the best. Probably uh, what the teams are need to do is uh, stay together and um, be positive at the end of the, um, the matches. That's what you need. So Chinese Taipei, well done to them. They've got the bronze medal winning by six to two. Next up, we've got the gold medal match in the under 18 women's team's recurve competition. It's Korea against China. That's coming up next. Well, it's going to be Korea versus China in the recurve under 18 women's team's gold medal match. Korea moving through to the final with comfortable wins over Poland, Ukraine and France. They beat Poland and France 6-0 and beat Ukraine 5-1. And China wins over Moldova, Spain and Chinese Taipei 6-0, 5-3, 6-2 respectively. So here we go. The three Koreans aged just 15. So the depth in women's archery and recurve Gabby seems as strong as ever with Korea making the final here with three 15 year olds. Remember, this is an under 18 age group. Uh, we know Korea is a really strong team in archery. I feel like they start really young to be preparing them for the future. Um, I'm pretty sure they're going to give us a show today. Wow, they're going to be amazing to watch. And remember, one of them, that's Yun, has already had experience here with the mixed competition. He was beaten in the quarterfinals. It's going to be China to go first, and it's Bao Yijing. Speaking of youngsters, the three Chinese are all aged 16. Uh, 
final is underway. So lots to chatter in the Chinese team. Well, there's a Lucera to start with. Just a four scored there. One of the Chinese archers, Zhu, is going for her second medal of these games. Winning bronze in the mixed teams competition with Ji Jing Yuan. And now we are back to have a first look at the Koreans here. Yu Siu Lia is first up. Qualified in 11th place for the individual. The highest qualifier was Yun of the three Koreans. She was the top qualifier. And there's a good start from Kim Hyun. And now Yun. There you go, the first 10 from the Korean team. Actually, that was Kim with the 10 there, so excellent work from her. Well, has that grabbed the seven line? Don't know. What do you reckon, Gabby? It's been ruled a six initially. Well, I feel like uh, they seem to be a, a little bit nervous. I feel like uh, I would be nervous as well. <laughs> it's a gold medal match. But I feel like um, probably they're asking each other where they are aiming. Uh, we saw that they were, uh, while one of the archers was stepping out of the line, the other one was asking a little bit uh, about uh, where they where they were shooting at, and um, I'm pretty sure they will be a little bit more prepared for the next end. On the other side, we see Korea. Just looks like they know where to shoot, and it looks like uh, like the wind is not affecting them. <laughs> so Yun here, she was the one that shot the. Nine in the first leg, and she's going okay. Know it just uh, slightly astray there is six, but still plenty of room here for the Korean team to claim the first set. As Kim Hyun looks to seal it, and there it is with an eight. So, mixed bag from both teams there, but in the end, a very comfortable win for Korea in set number one, provisionally 51 to 44. All of a sudden, the Chinese team are a little quiet after a couple of loose arrows. There are four and a six on their scorecard. And uh, against Korea, they generally, Gabby, as you well know, they if you get anything like that on your scorecard, it's very, very tough to come back. I feel like it's going to be difficult to get some confidence after um, shooting a four, but... Um, yeah, you just need to stay a little bit positive. It is really the the um, the circumstances are really difficult, and I feel like they don't need to be uh, sad about it, or they kind of need just to encourage themselves and be a little bit um, positive about what's happening. Um, yeah, I cannot give them another advice. I feel like uh, that's everything I, I have, you know. <laughs> Nice. Well, you, Seul Ha, is very happy on the shooting line. She's enjoying herself. Uh, 
it's always nice when you're winning. So scores remained as they provisionally were, 51 to 44 in that first set. You're watching the gold medal match in the recurve under 18 women's teams competition here at the World Archery Youth Championships of 2023 from Limerick Island. Strong southerly breeze blowing behind the the arches. For today's competition, as we see Bao Yijing start off with a 10. That's better from China. Yeah, that's indeed a better, better arrow. Yeah, first one of the match there, Gabby. Yeah, they just need to believe in what they're doing, and I feel like, uh, look. <laughs> I feel like the first end can be a little bit difficult for the for some new archers. Alternate shooting can be a little bit difficult as well. And um, yeah, I feel like they now find found their place. And um, yeah. Ah, easily their best rotation there. 28 points. Zhu with that last arrow. We know how strong Korea is in recurve archery. Kim, it's the next wave of youth coming through their system right here. Touched on it earlier, all of them are 15 years old. And remember, they've got, they could be at the next World Archery Youth Championships, Gabby, and competing in the same age category, all three of them. Yeah, I feel like uh, Korean archers are really talented. Uh, no, for nothing, they see them. We see them uh, winning Olympic medals and always win on top of their game. Um, I feel like Korea has a really nice developing system, and it's really nice to see such a young uh, archers being so talented. China with a two-point lead after the first rotation. Can they go on with it here as their compatriots look on? Wow, win really picking up here. Yeah, tough job there for Lee Si Han. That was really, really tough. It's going to bring the Koreans right back into this set. Oh, and that, that's really disappointing for the Chinese team. So they got a lock and a score of 49 again, and uh, they've not been able to crack 50 in the first two sets. Just 15 required. Oh, it's just a seven off the bow of you, Siul Ha. It looks really difficult, Wind. It looks like uh, uh, China, uh, the last two arrows from China were also really affected by that. And. Um, yeah, we see now 7-7 seven, seven from Korea is uh, not easy to shoot with this wind. Wow, very tough. That's only going to be a tight set in the end as it turned out, Gabby. Yeah, I feel like um, like the archers are trying to do the best. It looks really difficult conditions to shoot with. I feel like um, we see Team Korea and they look a little bit more in control when they are releasing the arrow. Um, but on the other side, I feel like uh, maybe Team China is, um, yeah, not being, they also don't have a coach. Probably they don't know what to do at the moment. Um, I don't know what's happening there. <laughs> well, yeah, we saw that in the mixed teams competition the other day, didn't we, with the Korean team. And uh, as we see the 
uh, with the the I guess the deliberate tactic of the Korean team to see how the athletes are going to respond with no coach and that's the and it worked pretty well for them whether this works for the Chinese team here we'll see at least they're on the board though Gabby you know with the, a tight set there so it's 3-1 in this match yeah we've seen Rick of Archery um, a little bit of a different story I feel like um, when you're uh, shooting a cumulative is a little bit more difficult to um, yeah, when you don't shoot an arrow or where you should, when you shoot a miss, it's a little bit di difficult to recover. But here's another story. Well, both teams started off pretty strong in the last set. China went 10 10 on their first two arrows before it all started to get really tough with that breeze. But they're telling themselves they're still in this contest. Even though they haven't cracked 50 yet in a set. Set number three we're in now. Start strong, don't they, the Chinese again. 9-9-10. Nine, nine, Dropping just the two points. Yun Suhi. The second ten of the match. You know, these recurve archers at this age, under 18s, are shooting from 60 metres. The under 21s will be shooting from the full, 20, uh, full 70 metres. As we see you, Seol Ha. Reload again with that breeze. Really strip picking up again. It looked like the wind was moving her a lot. I feel like uh, the wind comes and goes. Um, like it looks like some arrows uh, really easy to shoot, and the other ones look really difficult to shoot. Um, yeah, I think both teams have had uh, problems with the wind through the match. Well, Kim, with that nine. Gets the Korean team back on track, but it's a three-point advantage. But anything could happen here, and that's just a two. Wow. That's from Bao. That's a uh, very loose arrow. You know, the crazy thing is, Gabby, if the wind dies down and the Chinese team get two yellow scores here, they still have a chance in the set. Wow. There you go. <laughs> you just said it just happened. Uh, I want you to, like, uh, to commentate all my matches. <laughs> <laughs> there, That's there what they needed. Here's another, here's another nine. So 49. So even though they had a two on their scorecard, that equals what they scored in the second set where they tied the set with the korean so and now they're getting buffeted by the win and yun is under pressure well well done to yun there she composed herself superbly well you seol ha a seven so eight required for a tied set here's an eight so let's just check there it's going to be a tight set again 49 apiece it is tough out there now normally these archers would be shooting in the 50s each set but off the three completed sets so that's six sets uh, in total across the two teams gabby only once have we seen one team get above 50 so far and that's the koreans in the first set 
Uh, I personally thought the conditions were gonna be better uh, today. I saw uh, Korea shooting 53, 54, 52 in their first match. Um, also, uh, other teams getting 57 uh, or better scores, you know. Uh, but we definitely see uh, the same thing we have seen through this. Uh, week through these days. I feel like it's um, really difficult to uh, stay calm and shoot your arrows. You can see the archers that, uh, well, in both sides, you can see bo uh, all the archers a little bit, um, yeah, struggling with the win. It, it is uh, kind of funny to see, uh, but at the same time, uh, we're not there, you know, like we need to be there as well to. Uh, to see what's happening and um, and shoot with the wind as well. <laughs> so here we go, fourth and final set. Korea lead by four set points to two. Very intriguing match this one. China need to win the set to send it to a shoot off. And anything in the gold zone or the yellow zone, rather, is just going to be absolutely relished by the teams. It looked like uh, she's waiting uh, for the right time to shoot her arrow. I hope that helps her. Well, based on what we've seen, an eight, you're going to take it. <laughs> Normally not, maybe, but... You're taking it today. Yeah, we see that they are also shooting uh, black and and white. Um, so I feel like she's pretty happy with that eight. Oh, fighting through it are the Chinese team. They just need to keep going. Korea searching as well. Well, only three tens from the Koreans so far in the match. Four tens from China. Kim Hyun with the last arrow of the first rotation. Well, the Koreans put themselves in the box seat, but might not mean much given what we've seen in this match. The all important last three arrows. China can just get into the 50s. They will be feeling hopeful at least. I don't think she liked the release of that one. So a big last arrow coming up here. Huge. Well, there's got to be a 10, really. It is a 10. Wow. Third set in a row that Chinese team have scored 49. Hasn't been good enough to win this, those sets though, the only tied sets. So that's all Korea need. 23 for the win. And there's nine of them. So Yun has done her job. She's gone nine, nine, 10, nine, nine, nine in her last six arrows. That's pretty decent in these conditions. China now looking unlikely to win the gold however there's still one more arrow to score here for kim and just on cue the wind picks right up again for her the koreans one arrow to come in the match and she needs six points to win it and it just creeps into the seven zone it's going to be korea who've won the gold medal 
Oh boy, what a match. Very difficult for both teams, but Korea get there by the skin of their teeth. I don't doubt that relief will be the biggest emotion that's flowing through their camp right now. And China, well, you've got to feel for them, Gabby. Yeah, I feel like we could see Team Korea a little bit more um, calm, a little bit more less affected by the wind. Uh, you know, sometimes technique can uh, play a lot in this uh, in these conditions, uh, the Korean team look a little bit more solid. Uh, pretty sure China 49, 49, 49, the last three ends isn't bad. Um, I really hope they can find themselves for their uh, individual matches. And yeah, congratulations to Team Korea. Well, Korea again move into the top of the podium in women's teams archery they are a force of course at olympic level in that discipline and here come the next wave we didn't see the best of them today in these windy conditions the korean team but they have found a way to win and get on top of the podium today and today so congratulations to the korean women's team they win the gold china the silver and chinese taipei win the bronze will have the victory ceremony coming up shortly So congratulations, um, a big win here at Limerick today. How are you feeling? Uh, 우승, 우승하신 거 축하드립니다. 오늘 소감이 어떠십니까? 우승하신 소감이 어떠십니까? So good. 아니 한국말 아, 아 너무 좋아요. <웃음> 아 아니 노래. 아 바람이 너무 많이 불어서 못할 줄 알았는데 너무 좋아요. 아 바람이 너무 많이 불어서 어려웠는데 그래도 메달 따서 너무 좋아요. We are extremely happy with the victory today. Uh, there was a uh, strong uh, gust of wind, but we we could manage it and we made it finally. So tell me more about the conditions. Yesterday, the day before, it's been raining as well, but today the winds are blowing arrows all over the place. How you how did you deal with that? Well, 오늘 그 바람이 경기장에서 엄청 많이 불었어요. 어제도 그랬고 그, 그저께도 그랬고 비도 오고 바람도 불고 그랬는데 오늘 결승 경기장에 경기하는 컨디션은 어때, 어째, 어땠었나요? 아니. 이게 컨디션 때문에 컨디션 어. 음. 컨디션 어땠지? 일단 어. 바람이 연습장에서보다 훨씬 많이 불어서 더 몸이 주체가 안 되는데 그래도 끝까지 지키고 싸워서 너무 좋고 컨디션도 아주 좋습니다. 
There were really strong wind on the finals venue. It was much stronger than in the practice field, so I was quite worried about the uh, the environment at the final venue. But it was okay to shoot. And then first win in a Korean shirt. What does the future bring? Future bring. What 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 are you looking forward to in the future? Okay. 오늘 승리 겨, 결승에서 우승을 하시고 금메달을 따셨는데 앞으로의 한국 팀의 계획은 어떻게 되십니까? 어, 앞으로의 계획은 이제 다른 뭐 이제 큰 전국 체전 같은 데나 이런 데서 이제 메달 따고 더 열심히 운동을 어, 하려고 합니다. Uh, as a Korean team, we we won the gold medal match today. But uh, uh, actually, we have we also have national competitions in Korea. So we're gonna do practice more, and in the future, we hopefully uh, to be a team as a, again an international match. Fantastic! Congratulations. Well, a good insight there, Gabby, into uh, the Koreans and the win. It was uh, interesting to see them playing it down a little bit. Yeah, they look really cute. Um, it looked like they were a little bit shy. Um, I wouldn't be shy if I would like just won a gold medal match, you know. Um, but really happy for them. I'm pretty sure we will be seeing more of them in the future. Yes, 100%. Remember, all three were just aged 15. And uh, as we touched on during the commentary, the, they could all be back at the next World Youth Archery Championships in the same competition, the under 18s, but of course they'd have to qualify. And we know how really tough getting into Korean national teams is for Korean archers. That in itself is an achievement, let alone going on and winning world titles. Korea's uh, challenge today is expected to be fierce. They've made the gold medal matches in all eight matches, or all four categories that we've got to, uh, coming up today. We've seen them win gold in the women's under 18s. We're going to see the under 18 men's team go for gold against France and the under 21 team, uh, the women's team going for gold against France as well. And then the men's team going for gold against China. So could Korea sweep all four age category teams today? We will see next matches after this next victory ceremony coming up will be the under 18 men's bronze medal match. That will be Colombia who have made the final four. Brilliant effort from them. They're going to play India. And then as I touched on, France will play Korea okay, in the under 18 the men's team's gold medal match. So here is the victory ceremony now for the under 18 women. The Korean team winning gold as we saw over China and Chinese Taipei winning the bronze beating France. Both matches being scored six set points to two. Medals will be presented by Sport Ireland National Federation's manager, Brian Staunton. will be presented by Archery Ireland President, Philip Early. Bronze medal, Chinese Taipei. Yep, good win against France for the Chinese Taipei team. Really good effort from Chiang Yu Tong Shu or Lin Shi Yan and Fong Yu Chu. We saw in the mixed teams competition earlier in the meet. Good day for them actually. They had good wins over, well, three wins out of four, obviously, just the semi final loss to China. Plenty of talent coming through in Chinese Taipei, another emerging nation, of course, in archery.
They try to get the silver. Just found those windy conditions. Just a little too tough. Still a wonderful effort for them to get to the final. And what was a hotly contested category. Bao Yijing, Li Sihan, and Zhu Jing Yi are those three archers who represented their country very well in that gold medal match. Yes, it is very much a hold on to your hatch day today in this breeze. Gold medal, of Korea. But Korea stand on top of the podium as they attempt to try and sweep all four recurve teams' titles today here in Limerick. And they're off to a good start. Wasn't easy for them. Battling the conditions, probably more so than their opponents today with those very strong southerly winds. But for you, Seol Ha, Kim Hyun, and Yun Su Hee. And they continue this very proud tradition in women's team's archery and success this team and the country have had over many, many years by claiming the under 18 women's team's gold medal here at the World Archery Youth Championships for 2023. Our career's dominance in women's team's archery on full display here in Limerick, here at the 2023 Youth Championships. They claim the gold medal with China the silver and Chinese Taipei getting the bronze. So next match coming up, we're going to move to the under-18 men's next in recurve team competition. Gold medal match will be between France and Korea. Next up, though, it's the bronze medal match, Colombia playing India. Stay with us. Uh, so also look to them in the future and uh, we're very happy with them so they have our logo 
the only side to have the world championships. And it's the first time you're presenting this uh, medal, the new medals, here in the youth championship. In the youth championship, so then uh, after this we will have the para championship, will be the second one, and then the world championship in Berlin will be the third time. The youth and why you decided to do it here in the youth championship for the first uh, I time? I, I would say it's, it's, the new it's generation. time in the, the new generation. Uh, it's looking to the better towards the future with new medals. New medals, new generation. Thank you so much. Beautiful medals. Thank you. Thank you. and judges to the field of play. This is the World Archery Youth Championships for 2023 under 18 men's recurve team action. Bronze medal match between Colombia and India. Colombia beating Malaysia, Japan before losing to France in a shoot off in the semi finals. The Indians beating Mexico, the US, but losing to Korea in the semis. So here we go with the match unfolding. Colombia were the fifth qualifiers, and uh, one of their archers, Daniel Jimenez Serna, was fifth in the individual qualification. So very high ranking. So the 16 year old of one to watch. And the Indians' highest qualifier for the individuals, Ujwal Dharma, who also competed in the mixed teams competition. Indians qualified in third place for this competition. But as we see, seating sometimes are just that. That's all they are, seatings. It's on the day, on the, at the moment, whether who comes through and wins. And as we can see, the wind continues to buffet these athletes as India get the match underway. Here's Agastay Singh, the youngest of the three Indians on the team for this competition. And he starts off with a nine. Ishmael Dharma, 16 years of age. Goldie Mishra, 17. And this is Mishra. And I think he's just missed the nine mark there. Might be an eight that last arrow, but we'll see. Now we have a look at the Colombians. 
Ludwin van Jakob Holgen Karo. Now this is Andres Hernandez Vera. He's the youngest of the Colombians. He's just 15. That done extremely well. It's great to see the Colombians in the competing for a medal in teams competition. Daniel Jimenez Serna. Long hold from him. Looking for that steady hand. Oh, he's battling, isn't he? I don't think I've seen a longer hold than this ever on the shooting line. Wow. That was tough, Gabby. Well, that was indeed a really long hold. He managed to keep it in the close to yellow sun i feel like uh, they're gonna be they're gonna have a little bit of time pressure the next uh, rotation but let's hope that doesn't affect them that much we see that the wind is pretty strong at the moment um i feel like india had like a, a little bit of a rough start but um we see that they are recovering and they are keeping their arrows in the yellow yeah three out of their five arrows in the yellow so see what can happen with this last arrow here another nine so 49 again they would have been wanting hot into the 50s you really need to be in the 50s but maybe not today Colombia still have work to do Seven. gonna need more now from Hernandez Vera. Seven. Seven. Now, can they still win the set? They can, but only just now. It's going to require a 10 from Jimenez Serna. It's not to be. Well, disappointing there for Colombia. They had a big chance to take the first set there in the end. The Indians are going to take it by two points provisionally. 49-47. Despite that, uh, let's talk about Colombia. Really neat to see them in the uh, in a uh, competing for a medal in a team's competition, Gabby. Yeah, we definitely see a lot of Asian teams in the recurve side. Uh, Archer is really strong in um, India, uh, Korea, China. Uh, but uh, Latin countries uh, normally not that uh, successful. I feel like there are some good archers from Colombia. We had uh, Valentina uh, Contreras. No, Valentina. I don't remember her last name. Uh, but Valentina, she became world champion last uh, uh, youth world championships. Uh, I see Colombia developing really good archers. And it looks like they're enjoying themselves. Uh, we could see one of the archers looking at himself in the camera. And on the other side, we also see uh, India really focus and they, they look like they're enjoying the, what they're doing. Well, that last shot just above the Indian team with those flags really blowing strongly. Going, that's an indication. As you can see the wind flapping on the Colombians uniforms. How tough it's going to be through this match. So we have Bulgion Karo on the shooting line here. The oldest of the three Colombians. As he looks to get his team on the board and straight away he's not confident. Lovely adjustment. What a wonderful start for Colombia. First 10 of the match. Uh, 
Jimenez Serna starting off with an eight and a seven, and he still can't find the yellow for his team. Yeah, it looks like pretty windy. It looks like they're adjusting their sides to the circumstances. Um, yeah, they seem to be landing high. I think that sometimes when uh, when it's really windy and you don't want to, and the wind is coming from the back, you don't want to uh, lose uh, control and you aim a little bit high. Um, that can make their arrows land a little bit high, but I don't see that happening to India. <laughs> no, and particularly Agastay Singh there. He's uh, scored his first 10 and his team's first 10 of the match. So 25. So one point advantage for the Indians to the second rotation we go. Just feels like the Colombians have had the worst of the conditions in this match. Very unfortunate and unlucky. Yeah, it definitely looks really difficult. The wind just calms down just a touch there, and that's what happens. All of a sudden, Hernandez Vera buries one in the 10 zone. And still Jimenez Serna can't find the yellow. So 49. It's a two-point improvement by Colombia from their first set score but if India score like they did on the first rotation they'll have another two set points but now there's a bit of a twist well Agastay Singh's been fantastic so far he's got uh, 10 just a moment ago Long hold from this time, though. Oh, look at that. The best arrow of the day so far. He's looking amazing. He's uh, like, it looks like the wind is not affecting them. I'm pretty sure that Team India wants to uh, have some communication about like where, where they are aiming at uh, so they can get more arrows like that. And there is the second set to India. A fantastic finish there to that set. A 10 and a 9. And they're going to claim a one point. And look at the delight on a couple of the archers' faces. They had to step up right there, Gabby, and they did. That was great. Yeah, I feel like they're really happy about what they're doing. It looks like they're talking to each other. They're uh, communicating about like how to shoot their arrows and where they were aiming at. And that's what you need in these windy conditions. Just uh, stay to your process and trust your team and do whatever, um, whatever you need to shoot your arrows in the yellow. Oh, fantastic stuff. Remember, it was a six there in that uh, set two to India. So they needed to score very big there on those last two arrows and they did beautifully so very nicely done by the indian team they lead four set points to nil now they're just one more set win away from winning bronze and not only delighting themselves but their compatriots as well we see some of the archers that we saw yesterday in the compo finals Probably they talk about what what it was happening in the finals uh, venue, and they are just taking all the advices that their teammates were giving them yesterday, and it looks like they are doing really good. Start of the third set now. Again, it's very tough there for Paul Gunkaro. Hernandez Vera steps, steps up now. 110 from him 
on his last arrow. Just a seven this time. I feel like the wind is affecting every arrow in a different way. I feel like you really need to find a spot where to aim every arrow. Because uh, with these conditions, some arrows landing left, some arrows landing right. Um, you really don't know what to do sometimes. And what I would recommend them is just uh, release in the middle and just do strong shots. Just what the Indians needed to start this third set. Yeah, really solid uh, stuff there from the Indian archer. Well, Singh has got it on a string right now. That is three tens in a row from the youngest member of the team. Well, that really puts the pressure on Colombia now. Remember, they need to win the last two sets of this contest to take this match to a shoot-off. And they trail by six. Massive mountain to climb now for them, but that was a fantastic arrow from Lourdes van Jakob Holgin Karol. See what Andreas Hernandez Veda can do here. So last arrow of the set here, and uh, Jimenez Suna still hasn't found the 10 zone in the match, or the 9 zone, and that's his one and only arrow that's going to make the yellow zone. So Colombia lock in 50, but based on what we've seen from India, and if this wind stays down a little bit, India should get the bronze medal. Just 14 points away. Singh would love nothing more than his fourth 10 in a row. Well, he's missed out, but eight is solid. Six or better to win the bronze medal for India. Oh, it's a way to finish. Fantastic. Three tens in that set. Easily the best set of the match here for India. And they win bronze here in the under-18 men's recurve teams competition. They lock in a score of 55. Colombians finish with 50 and not able to be at their best. But India, too strong, Gabby. Yeah, it was amazing shooting from the Indian team. We saw really good arrows. I feel like they de they were definitely a little bit more confident than Team Colombia probably. Um, but I feel like uh, Team Colombia also needs to be happy. They made it all the way through the goal, uh, bronze medal match. And congratulations to them. I'm pretty sure that they, uh, they can do a lot this weekend and let's hope they also make it to the to the medal matches in the individual yeah the individual comes up in a couple of days be interesting to see if they can come through one of those three but india too good in that one winning by six set points to nil next up we have the gold medal match in the under 18s for the men and france and korea not too far away from doing battle
ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the coaches and judges to the fill up play. So here we go, it's the gold medal match in the under 18 recurve men's teams competition here at the World Archery Youth Championships of 2023 from Limerick Island, a partly cloudy day, no rain at the moment, but strong southerlies continue. Gusting around 40 to 50 Ks, averaging around 30 kilometers per hour, which is very strong. So those are the conditions that greet the three archers from each team here, France and Korea. And they were the top two qualifiers, France number one, Korea number two. France out there with wins over Ukraine, Great Britain and Colombia. Two of them though in shoot-offs. Quarter-final and the semi. So I touched on those shoot-offs wins for France. That was in the quarterfinals against Great Britain. Won the shoot-off 29-26. Beat Colombia in the semi in a shoot-off 29-28. Korea's wins have been more decisive. They beat Australia 6-2. Chinese Taipei 5-1 in the quarters. And India 5-3 in the semi-finals. We have the top qualifier for individual competition competing in this match. Baptiste Adis from France. And the number two qualifier for the individuals also competing, Ji Yi Chan. So, two very good young archers. But Tistadis, we saw almost win a title in Nîmes earlier on in the year in, in uh, seniors competition. He was fantastic. The 16 year old. We'll see if he can make a splash here today as Jules Pedro is getting the match underway for France. Fantastic start from him. Qualified 11th for the individuals. Let me see Alexis Renaud Dignol just waiting for the breeze, hopefully, to settle. And it, France make a great start here. And now Baptiste Adis, he's already hugely experienced for just 16 years of age in seniors' competition. He got the worst of the conditions there, Gabby, didn't he? But he opens with an eight. Yeah, we see on the French side two left-handed archers. I think that the wind could affect them in a different way. Um, uh, on, I feel like they serve really good with a 10-10-8. Uh, really good score for these conditions. So let's watch the Koreans now. As we see Choi Chul-jun. We saw the 15-year-olds out there for Korea in the women's competition. We've got two 16-year-olds and a 17-year-old here for in the men's team. And this is G, the eldest of the three, or the oldest of the three. Oh. Well, he struggled to release there, and that is why. Brutal win. <laughs> the facial expressions there of Choi we seal said it all, I think. Looking it like he wasn't prepared for the shot. I uh, think that a seven is pretty good for how how he shot the arrow. <laughs> how good is France here? Three tens from four arrows so far. Oh, 
Oh, wow, that really does equalise the ledger now. France were looking hugely comfortable. Adis. A quick release, and it's another 10. So, France lock in 51. Four tens on the scorecard and a three. <laughs> Should still be enough, though, or will it? Yes, it will. So two tens to tie the set. Going to be tough here with the win really picking up for Choi Chuljun. Oh, it looks really difficult. I think that's a nine. Just uh, jumped up above the that other arrow. So that will confirm France winning the first set. Even if G gets a 10, which he does. First 10 of the match for Korea. Worth mentioning, too, that G was in the mixed teams competition earlier on. They lost in the quarterfinals, that Korean team, to the USA in that match. But look at the breeze, Gabby. I know we harp on about it, go on about it, but wow, it is tough. No, it indeed looks really difficult. I feel like that's something that we need to talk about. These conditions are really difficult for all these young archers to shoot with. Um, I feel like Team France looks a little bit more solid. Uh, that arrow outside of the yellow uh, looked like a mistake, but we could, we could see that the wind was blowing really, really hard when Alexis needed to shoot. Um, I just hope uh, for both teams that they can stick to their process and do whatever is needed to get this gold medal. Well, right. That's so right. Bruno Dino got a three in that first set, but they still won the set. Incredible by effort by the French team. Due to the quality of four of their other arrows. So it's two to nil to France. Korea looking to increase their standards. Choi Wu Siuk to go first. And we've seen this before, Gabby, haven't we? Things didn't go pan out well for Korea, but boy, do they bounce back. Yeah, I think they used their first and two side in. And then after that, they just shoot. Uh, 10 after 10 after 10 and uh, let's see if we we get some of that in this match as well she now on the shooting line A 27 that's better than the 23 well better than the 23 they got after the first rotation of the first set Do. Looks like that one might be in the eight zone. Yeah, I think that it is an eight as well. And that, you know, Dinu goes uh, just below the 10 line. He's looking for that consistency. He's the 16 year old as well. And now Adis. It's Korea leading by a single point. Koreans looking to get this match back on even terms. And Choi didn't like the release straight away, did he? It looks a little bit like all recurve arch all uh, right-handed archers are having a little bit of trouble with aiming. Uh, that comes from the wind pushing them from the back. Yeah, that's a very good observation, Gabby. G with the last arrow, and it's a 10. Much needed for the Korean team as they lock in 
54. Really nice shot there. Big improvement on their 50 in the first set. See if France can match it here. Well, great arrow there from Tetiu. Hey, it looks like he wants a, he really wants a, uh, that gold medal. 100%. This is good from France. This is excellent stuff from them. So, to win the second set here, a 10 from Baptiste Adis. Nine to tie, anything lower than that, Korea will win it. Big arrow in the match here. It's a nine. Adis not quite able to get it into the 10 zone, so it's going to be a tied set. That was good response there by France, 10-9-9. And that's the thing with Korea. You need to take your chances against any Korean in a team's competition. Yeah, 100% agree. I feel like France had a little bit of uh, bad luck with her, their first two arrows, one being really close to the nine and the other one being also really, really close to the eight. But um, guiding the set is also... Uh, a really good thing. I really feel like they look really focused. Uh, also, Team Korea looks uh, looks really focused. It looks like uh, the left-handed archers are having a little bit of advantage here. But um, I I feel like also uh, all the archers are shooting really, really good. Confirmation that first arrow from Tedu was a an eight so confirmed scores the tied 54 each so three set points to one france lead in this under 18 gold medal match against korea halfway through the match Alawind seemed to settle there, but Choi wasn't settled on the shooting line. That's a good arrow there. That's his first 10 from Choi Chul Jun. So 7, 10, 9. So plenty of opportunity here for France. They can win the match here, of course, in this third set. They look confident. I'm liking what we're seeing from all three of them at the moment. Yeah, it looks like the team is communicating really good. That's what you need in these windy conditions. They also wait to shoot their shots when they feel more comfortable. And that's really nice to see. Right, Dees, just one ten on a scorecard so far. Getting buffeted, isn't he? It wasn't uh, happy there. Like, yeah, it looked like it was really windy. I feel like um, sometimes you also need to think about the time that you need to leave to your teammates to shoot. And also, yeah, the arrows that you need to shoot later on. A big chance here for Korea to move clear. Build an unassailable lead in this third set and lock the match up. That's good. That's just what they needed. So to win the set, a yellow score is required here from Ji Yi Chan. Mm -hmm. 
A well, long hold, and the set is still alive. But France can't win the match in the set now. So we'll be going to a decider one way or the other. Three tens would be amazing from France if they can do it. And that ends that. So it's going to be Korea who will win this set. A real loose arrow there from Jules Pedo. So we're going to be locked up three all. Gabby, off to a decider we go. Uh, they need to sh uh, shoot three, three really good arrows right now just to get a feeling for the next round because this one is uh, not reachable anymore. Uh, D spins ends with a nine, much better than the five that we saw from him, but the Koreans have got that set in the bag. And it's going to a deciding set, three set points each. Now it all comes down to whether you can handle the moment, Gabby. Yeah, I really feel like uh, sometimes when these conditions is, um, it's not only the conditions you need to think about, but you also need to uh, think about like you releasing the arrows, shoot, shooting your arrows the best way you can. Uh, pressure, of course, can get uh, get in that moment because it's uh, yeah, it's not only the wind but your nerves. Uh, but I'm pretty sure these young archers are gonna be able to to manage their nerves and shoot their best, their yeah, the best they can. Well, three set points each. Hope you're enjoying the coverage, folks. Glenn Lava here, and you're listening to Gabby Schlosser as well. Of course, a world championship and Olympic Games medalist. And this match should be a terrific conclusion now. Three set points each. Korea won that set 52-48, by the way. And here we go, fourth and final set. Perfect start there, Jules Peto with a 10. Renaud right, Dinu is having massive problems with the wind there, but he stayed in control. Great score for him given the fact he was being buffeted. Adis with a 10. This has France pumped up. 29 out of 30. He was indeed showing his experience. Uh, let's see what Korea, Korea can do about it. Well, if we get heavy scoring through to the end of this one, it'll be fantastic. Oh, Choi, brilliant arrow. So the Koreans hanging tough here. Seven and France a huge advantage now. Three points going into the last three arrows of the match. Gold medal at stake. Oh, nothing more than Jules Pedro can wait now. Knowing he's done his job with a ten and a nine in this final set. No, Dinu. Now, next up. Everything's yellow for France so far, but still one more error to come from Baptiste Adis. And it's a seven, and that now gives Korea a big chance to come back. So. 
29 required. Well, that keeps the Koreans in the hunt. They now need two tens for the gold medal. Choi Chulshun scored a 10 with his last arrow. Oh, that's it. It's a shocker there. Hard luck there for Korea, but France have got the gold medal. Not in the way they would have wanted, that's for sure. And this last arrow can, will complete the match from G. And it's a seven. Well, that's really gut-wrenching there for Korea to concede the match in that way. But France are going to win the gold medal. And consistently through the match, they were just that little bit better on the day. Now you have to feel there for Choi Chul-jun. He'd been arguably the most impressive of the Korean archers through the match, Gabby, but when it really counted, he couldn't deliver. Yeah, these windy conditions are really difficult. I feel like all the archers are managing the wind the best way they can. We saw uh, the French team, the last hour from the French team was seven on the uh, left side. And also the arrows that went a little bit wide from Korea were on the left side, probably the wind uh, pushing a little bit more. Um, but uh, what I see is amazing stuff and it looks like all the archers are just a hundred percent there for the matches it looks it really nice what they're they all are doing so France won that uh, last set 54 to 44 what a shame it was really building that last set there towards a massive climax didn't happen unfortunately so France won the match by five set points to three claim the gold medal. Korea get the silver and earlier it was India getting the bronze medal and next we'll have the victory ceremony before we move into the under 21 age category which is coming up so stay with us. So guys, you're, you've just won at Limerick. How are you feeling? Vous venez juste de gagner à Limerick. Comment vous sentez-vous? 
Bah, je suis extrêmement heureux parce que c'est mon premier championnat du monde et ça me permet d'avoir vraiment euh, une grande expérience pour euh, ma potentielle future carrière euh, dans le tir à l'arc. I'm really happy it's my first world championship and I hope it will help me getting experience for my for the ca further career. And then um, the wind again today has just been crazy. So some of the arrows were shooting off to twos and fours. How did you find how the pressure with that? How did you deal with that? Le vent était plutôt fort aujourd'hui euh, avec des flèches qui allaient un peu dans tous les sens, dans le 2, dans le 4, dans le 5. Euh, comment vous vous êtes senti par rapport à ça Comment vous avez pu gérer ça euh, C'est vrai que le vent il a été assez compliqué à gérer euh, sur toute la compétition. Mais on en a eu sur toute la compétition, euh, pas que sur l'arène. Et euh, on a su se remobiliser même après les, euh, les mauvaises flèches, enfin les, les flèches qui partaient un peu plus loin à cause du vent. On a su rester une équipe soudée et ensemble euh, jusqu'au bout. So the wind was affecting during the whole competition, not only during the finals. Uh, we could keep it as a team and keep it together when it was a bit more struggling and managed to, to fight against it and, and find our way in, in the tent. Great, and then winning in a, in a French jersey, are you looking forward to another win in the future, um, like down the line? Gagner dans un maillot de l'équipe de France, est-ce que tu t'attends à d'autres victoires et quel est le futur que tu vois pour le, dans ton avenir en équipe de France? Bah c'est sûr que voilà, gagner chez les jeunes, ça commence à dire quelque chose. C'est pour faire de l'expérience pour chez les seniors. Donc c'est vraiment cool de, de gagner cette médaille, encore plus voilà, à l'international avec le, le, le maillot de France. Mais euh, ouais, ça fait de l'expérience pour les prochaines et j'ai hâte de retrouver cette équipe sur le circuit senior. So it's super cool to have uh, to, to win that gold medal with the French jersey and as a junior, and it gives us experience to to hope getting the same team in the in the future with the national team in the adults. Brilliant. Congratulations, guys. Félicitations. Bien joué. Well, great effort by the French team there, Baptiste Ardis. You saw him in Nîmes earlier on in the air. Now, that's an indoor event going within a whisker there of winning the gold. That's on the Senior Indoor World Series. That would have been amazing had he won that, Gabby, at the age of 16 to win a senior title. So uh, even though he was maybe uh, the... The other two outshone just a touch by the, his two teammates today. There are three French archers with promising futures. Yeah, I think they all shot really good today. Um, Baptiste, of course, having a little bit more experience being in the senior team at the moment and also uh, competing in the juniors. I feel like that can help you a lot to get a lot of confidence for the future. And let's not forget that the Olympic Games are uh, next year in uh, Paris. I think that the French team is preparing really well for it. Uh, you can see it like uh, with their younger generations and the senior team as well. Well, absolutely. There's nothing more exciting than a local athlete competing at a home Olympics in his home country. And that's what uh, Baptiste Adis and all the French archers will be hoping to achieve as we welcome you now to the victory ceremony for the recurve under 18 men's teams competition here at the World Archery Youth Championships for 2023. France, the gold. Korea, the silver. And India, the bronze. Medals will be presented by World Archery Executive Board Member, Jean-Michel Clairois. Gifts will be presented by Archery Ireland President, Philip Early. So the Indians get the bronze. Ujwal Dama, Goldie Mishra, and Agastai Singh. Great job from him. He was fantastic in that match. Six to nil over Colombia. scored more tens than his teammates, three of them. And the other two, Ujwal, Nama and Goldie Mishra, one each. So low scoring encounter against Colombia. But they handled the conditions better. And reminding you, these conditions are brutal at the moment. That wind is averaging nine metres a second at the moment, gusting to 15 metres per second. That's 30 kilometers an hour to 58. So it's very, very strong southerly today. At least it's not cold. It's 20 degrees in Limerick this afternoon. Silver medals, Republic of Korea. 
Oh, it was Korea right there in that match until that two from Choi near the end. What a shame. Choi Chuljun, and he just uh, lost his radar in the blustery conditions. Choi Wu Siuk. To silver medal and G. Uh, Yi Chan. So they get the silver, the Koreans, in this tournament today. Well, France stand on top of the podium. Great team effort from Baptiste Adis, Jules Pedro, and Alexis Renault Dinur. Baptiste Adis. Adis is going to be one to watch in the individuals, that's for sure, as he gets his gold medal in the team's event. Adis, the top qualifier, 15 points clear of second place. He really scored heavily in qualification, but. Pedro and Redo Genoa are also going to be ones to watch to the two left-handers. Because they also performed superbly well in this gold medal match, which they won five set points to three. Recurve action will come up in a couple of days, of course. For now, it's Francis Day in the under 18 men's teams competition. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem of France. Well, wonderful effort from the French team today to win the gold over their opponent's career. Who won the silver? And it's India who get the bronze in the under 18 recurve men's teams competition. So we move next to the under 21s, and uh, we're going to have four matches to come now. And the women's matches first, bronze and gold, and then we're going to have the bronze and gold in the men's. So Poland are going to play China for the bronze in the women's, and Korea play France in the women's gold medal match. And then we'll have the men's bronze between Japan and France, and China and Korea battling gold in the under-21 men's. So that's to come. Stay with us. Yeah. Ah, we have some moves to show us. <laughs> Come on, one 
Targets have been moved from 50 meters to 70 meters. 60 to 70 in. We're going to start very shortly. Before we get started, I want to see if we have here fans for Poland. Make a little noise, Poland. Come on, guys. You can do better than this. Poland, are you there? <laughs> Thank you, Poland. You're great. Any here? Any fans here for China? China. job.
the coaches and judges to the field of play. Thank you for staying with us as the World Archery Youth Championships continue in the recurve teams competition. And we are now enjoying action from the under-21 women's. Coming soon, the gold medal match between Korea and France. But right now, it's the bronze medal match between Poland and China. And Poland have done particularly well to get to the final four. They were only the 13th seed. They beat the Americans, the fourth seed, and the Indians, the fifth seed, before losing to Korea 6-2 in the semi-finals. So fantastic effort by this Polish side. And China, too, the sixth seeds have done well to get through to the final four. Beating Spain, Chinese Taipei, before losing to France. So really cool to see these two teams make come through, Gabby. Both weren't seeded to reach the final four, but both have, which means they've beaten teams higher ranked than them, which is great. Yeah, I think that is going to be a really interesting match. It's uh, funny to see uh, new faces. I think it's uh, really nice that Poland made it all the way through the uh, bronze medal match. Um, the team from China a little bit more experienced having uh, Q Muyan in in their settings, but I think that uh, today is uh, a different game. I feel like uh, the weather is affecting the archers a lot. Let's see who managed to stay uh, a little bit better in the match. Gabby Schlosser with it, with us today on commentary as we get the match underway. Sun Yuan Yuan to go first. And the archers are shooting from the full 70 metres in this final. This wind continues to be very strong. 30 kilometres an hour, it's averaging, gusting to about 58. That's about 9 metres per second, up to 15 metres per second. So though tough conditions, but at least it's dry. And the temperature's OK. It's around 19 to 20 degrees Celsius. But those hats, look, because it's two Chinese archers out the back holding their hats. So anything, as we've seen through the day, Gabby, anything 8-9 is going to be competitive, it seems. Yeah, I feel like uh, shooting at 70 metres changes the game a little bit more than what we saw in the other four. It's got a lot of that. We saw Claudia Plaza. Open with an eight, and now this is Alexandra Obstorba. She competed in the mixed teams competition as well. And Barbara Gritschbeck is the last of the three. You know, these uh, two, these uh, Polish archers didn't uh, have high qualifying spots for the individual. Obstorba was the highest at just 24th. Compare that to the highest ranked Chinese archer who was Q Mu Yan. She was fourth. So she was right up there and uh, almost meddled in the mixed teams competition too, losing to India with Li Ming Ki. Another example right there of just how difficult it is today. It's a long way, 70 metres normally, Gabby, but it's even longer, it feels, in windy conditions like these. 
Yeah, it is. I feel like Team China is not having any problems with uh, the timing and they are all shooting really fast. That helps a lot in windy conditions. That means you don't need to hold, uh, you don't need to be aiming so long. Um, but it looks like the wind is pushing the arrows really far away. Well, just kind of trying to see where that arrow went, that last arrow. Poland might have a chance here. Eight. The last arrow was a five for China. So 41 is correct. And Poland need two good scores here to claim the first set. And this is all going okay for them. So it's a very low scoring first set nothing yellow at all but it still could be Poland's set here and it is wow 45 to 41 very low scores from both teams but as we've touched on before Gabby it's not how you get the two set points it's if you get the two set points yeah that's for sure I feel like the wind picked up a little bit um, these archers uh, really need to talk to each other and communicate about what they're going to do, where they're going to aim, uh, have a plan to to have a chance to win the bronze medal. I feel like uh, uh, Team China is having a little bit of a struggle um, to know where to aim, while Team Poland is um, just a little bit more concentrated, more focused. We see the same thing we saw with uh, with in the under 18. Uh, China is there with no coach. Uh, that can also affect them a little bit, in my opinion. Yeah, it's always uh, nice, I think, in tough conditions to get the wise words of your coach. That's for sure, that's for sure. I feel like um, sometimes we focus a lot in where we need to aim and what we need to do and if we get a, a factor from outside telling us what we need to do we don't think a lot and we just release our shot well china will be hoping that will galvanize the galvanize their team here two fives on their scorecard they won't want to repeat that as we get the second set underway Again, it drops low there from Sun Yun Yan. Yang Mei Yi, just a, hoping the wind will die down just a fraction for her. And there we are, that's the first yellow score, not only for China, but in the match. And we've had four, it's taken 14 arrows cumulatively across the two teams. That is how we like to see archery completed. Kyu Muyan getting the first 10. Platza continues to be solid. Good work there by Obstorva. To just calm herself, to execute a good arrow. Gritchbeck really struggling. But she's done okay. Wow, 26 place, 25. Very good work from both teams, Gabby. Yeah, it looks like all six archers uh, are taking it a little bit more serious. Uh, I feel like they look a little bit more less nervy, a little bit more in the zone. 
And it's nice to see a lot of arrows in the yellow in this set. Yeah, much better, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. I remember that first set score was just 45-41 to Poland. Young taking your time. Just inside the seventh zone. We saw a great last arrow from Hyu Mu Yan. It was 10. The only one so far for China. The only one of the match. And she follows it up with a nine. It's a line looker, but it's better from China. 51. That's a significant improvement by 10 points from their first set score it's going to be a six still a chance for poland to get points in the second set but only just now two tens required to share it oh she's so close to getting the 10 there but with that nine, that's going to confirm China as second set winners. So we're going to be locked up at two set points each. Eight. Well, much better from China in that uh, set. Four arrows in the yellow zone compared with none in the first set. So significant improvement for them and it earns them the set. So we're locked up at two each. Much better from China there, Gabby. Yeah, funny to see that uh, you, you, you hear that she, um, had like a little bit of a, a weird shot, but she managed to shoot a 10 and a 9, uh, both her two arrows. I feel like uh, she is just trusting the shot and she's aiming in the middle and just do it the best she can. Um, I feel like all archers need to uh, just do the best they can. Of course, it's a little bit difficult with the conditions. I feel like uh, Team Poland was a little bit more affected by the wind in, in this set. Um, but it's 2 2. Everything can happen from now on. Yeah, 2 all. It's all on here. It becomes a two set match for the bronze medal. Don't forget, we've got the gold medal match coming up next between Korea and France. And then the other 21 men's are in action Japan, France for the bronze, China, Korea for gold. Fifty-one forty-eight. The scores in that last set. We see some communication there from Team China. I feel like they are um, telling each other where they are aiming to uh, have a little bit more of control from uh, their score. Oh, they're all hanging in there, aren't they? Remember, no coach in that Chinese box for this match. Oh, that's a tough opening, isn't it? Well, you we can see how strong the wind is. So now Claudia Plaza. Chance here for Poland with uh, China only locking in a score of uh, 21 so far from the first rotation. Yeah, she's uh, pulling out there. Of Stolba, she got buffeted right on the setup there. So in comes 
Barbara Grishy Beck. Let's see if this uh, disruption might impact too much. Bob Stolper's going to have to get away a reasonably quick shot here because of the time restriction. 120 seconds. To release all six arrows. Poland did well there, Gabby. They've got a three-point lead, even though Bob Stolber had to pull out. Yeah, I feel like they she took a really good decision by stepping out of the line and not losing time. Uh, they are a little bit uh, tight in time, just having 41 seconds for all three archers. Um, but let's see. I feel like they are like keeping it together. It looks really solid. And um, Team China is also showing us a little bit of that. So 2 9 so far. Last arrow of this set here for China. That'll be a 7. So 46. That's what they're going to lock in. China. Now again, Poland with a big chance here. Oh, that's going to be a lot harder now with that four. They're going to have to concede the set thanks to that arrow. Grishbeck has got five seconds. She does very well. That's a 10. The first for Poland in the match. That. 43. Might have just pinched the set here. So scoring. Just got it by point, actually, Gabby. 47 46. So terrific last arrow there for. No. Poland. Yeah, wow. Well, she shot it. She shot it then when she uh, needed the needed the then the most. I feel like uh, this is this sh this shows a little bit of how they have been communicating and how they have been shooting all the way through the bronze medal match. It looks like they are really confident. It looks like they are having fun together. And time, weather, uh, nerve nerves nothing is affecting them it looks really nice yeah they're very calm and composed aren't they and remember in that set too we saw obsteva pulling out of her first arrow forcing grishbeck to come forward they handled that also absorbed the four that platza scored with her first arrow and still won the set thanks to that 10 from Grishbeck. So well done to the Polish team. They lead by four set points to two now. Last set of the match. China need a win to send this match to a shoot-off. Let's see if they can achieve it. Well, it's not going to help a five, but as we've seen in previous sets in this match and in other matches today that might not be the end of the world but it will require some good scoring well now that's going to be extra tough now two fives on the scorecard it looks like the win is pushing the arrows to the right um that means the archers need to aim a little bit more left um i'm pretty sure they saw what was happening and she, rea she reacted to it. Um, it is really difficult sometimes. Uh, the conditions are so extreme that you cannot do a lot about it. A massive chance now for Poland to claim victory in the set. It's going to be a seven as well. Six, seven, 
Here's Grishbeck again, who was so solid in that last set. Well, it's a low scoring match again, but Poland are in front. And that's what they're celebrating right there. They're going, okay, we haven't gone well, but we're still two points up. But that win is brutally tough. As we've mentioned many times, it's gusting up to around 15 metres per second. Averaging around nine. If there's ever a time now for young Mayi to get a 10, it's right now. Well, all the pressure now on Kyu Mu Yan. Oh, that's a good arrow there. But will it be enough? Poland for the bronze medal now. Great score there from Platza. And again from Ozdorba and now Poland within sight. It's Barbara Grichbeck. He shot a 10 with that arrow in the last end to win it dramatically for the match here and the bronze medal. And that's how to do it with a 10. Fantastic scoring there and Poland win the bronze medal. The 13th seed have rocketed up the standings to finish third. A fantastic effort in the under-21 women's recurve teams competition. Congratulations to Barbara Grichbeck, Alexandra Obstorba, and Claudia Platza. Wow, amazing stuff out there doing there. They look so happy. I see some emotions there. Um, congratulations to them. It's just amazing what they were doing. They gave us a little bit of what they were doing. Uh, they showed us a little bit what they were doing uh, all the way through this uh, bronze medal match. And it looked like it worked. Um, they just uh, kept growing in the match. They shot 45, 48, 47, 48. And at this point was uh, enough for them to win the bronze medal match. Really happy for them. Um, I think that Team China was a little bit impatient. Uh, they didn't stay calm, and I think that is really important. That that's really important in these conditions because, um, yeah, you cannot change them. Brilliant effort from Poland. Well done to them. Fantastic effort to get onto the podium, beating China. And uh, you got a feel for Q Mu Yan. She was involved in two bronze medal matches in the event so far in the mixed teams and the women's teams now and has lost on both occasions but she'll fight again in the individuals which is still coming so well done to the polish team of platza obstorba and grichbeck to win the bronze medal coming up next is the gold medal match between korea and france Well, Korea play France in the final. In the other 21 women's. Korea wins over Switzerland, Great Britain in a shoot-off in their quarter-final, and Poland in the semis. And France got through with a wins over Slovakia, Germany in a shoot-off in the quarter-finals, and China in the semis. Oh, 
Another battle between Korea and France. We saw the same two countries go for gold in the under-18 men's. Well, we saw the outsiders come through to compete for the bronze medal, Poland and China, 13th and 6th seeds respectively. These two teams were the top two qualifiers. Korea number one, France number two. They've come through to the final. As I touched on before, both had shoot-off victories in their quarterfinals. So they were fully tested in those matches before coming through. So it's going to be Koreans to start off. And it's the 19-year-old Seo Bo Yun. Fighting through these windy conditions as we've seen. All the way through this contest. Now Yum Hye Jung is trying to become a double gold medalist at these games. She was gold medal winner in the mixed teams competition with Won Jong Hyuk. So three nines for the Koreans to get started. Really nice start from Korea there. And now France. Caroline Lopez. Amelie Corto and Victoria Sebastian are their team. Lopez starts off with an eight. She qualified third for the individuals competition. And here's Sebastian. Great start for her. Worth mentioning too. Gabby as well, this French team, all three of them won gold at the last World Youth Archery Championships in teams competition. So they've kept the same team. They won that in the under-18 competition, have come through to the under-21s. That's fantastic. Well, that's really nice to see. I'm pretty sure they know each other pretty well uh, because they've been cheating years and years together. Um, Caroline uh, is also in the senior scene. I'm pretty sure uh, she's also um, helping her team a lot to communicate and what she thinks is important. Um, I think Team Korea is also doing the same. Looks really solid, keeping all their arrows in the yellow. Uh, it's really nice stuff to see. There's a 10 to win the set for Xiao Bo Yun, great arrow from her. 54 is very good. Let's see if France are up to it here. Lopez. She has a high world ranking too. 21 currently in the world is her ranking. Now two tens required for Sebastian and Cordo to share the set. And there's one of them. Victoria Sebastian back to back tens to start the match. Fantastic. So it's down to Amelie Cordo here. Let's see if she can 
mature compatriot and she can't so it's going to be the Koreans who will take that first set but good scoring from both teams Well, that was funny. She got caught on camera, having a, a jive to the music. I think that was a celebration for uh, winning the first match. Uh, she looks like she's sharing how she feels. I would be feeling the same way if I would have scored a 54 in the first round. <laughs> Absolutely. So 54 plays 51. Korea, remember, had high hopes at the start of the day to win all four gold medals today on offer. So far, they're one and one, winning the under-18 women's gold and the under-18 men's silver. Women's team's competition, they're, they're virtually unbeatable, aren't they, Gabby? The Korean national women's teams across all age groups are so good down through the years, haven't they? It is indeed a really, really strong team. I would say the best one in the in the world. Um, you know, like they have been winning Olympic uh, medals from I don't know, like I think it's like six Olymp eight Olympics ago or something like that. I feel like uh, this is a new generation, and this is really nice to see that that they already have a school uh, coming up to the to the next uh, Olympic team. So Lopez starts off second set with a nine. Lopez has won two gold medals actually at World Archery Youth Championships, also won the individual in 2021 as well. Left-handed Lopez, certainly one to watch here again in Limerick. It's a loose arrow there, the real, real first loose one there from Amelie Cordo. Yeah, it indeed looked like she didn't finish her shot, but um, yeah, it is really difficult to shoot all your arrows uh, in these conditions. I feel like what they need to do is just keep shooting strong and trying their best. Oh, loose arrow there from O Yi Jin as well to start the second set for Korea. Well, it's a tied first rotation. Two nines and six for both teams. So it's game on in the second here is Caroline Lopez. Sebastian's very experienced and very successful archer on the youth circuit through Europe. But she battled with that arrow. Two tens in the first set, now a nine and a five for her. And that puts pressure here on Amelie Cordo. Desperately wanting that win to calm down. That there was, I think, a miss. So Korea should wrap the second set up. You take a moment you take something for granted is when you get, and this wind will hurt you. So they still have to put three arrows on the target. And that's exactly what they've done. So that is the second set for Korea. Disappointing for France, Gabby. 
Yeah, I think that she was struggling a little bit with uh, the wind, but also with the time uh, that her teammates were uh, counting down. Um, yeah, I feel like sometimes uh, with these conditions, you can be uh, holding your arrow a little bit longer than normal. Um, but I hope they uh, they still motivated and they still uh, try to get back in this match. Korea, like always, looking super, super strong. Uh, it's really nice to see. And uh, they also look really, really happy. So I'm pretty sure they're enjoying what they're doing. Yeah, they look super relaxed and comfortable in the environment. And it's such a key factor, isn't it, Gabby? Because when you step on the shooting line, you should be all business, going through your processes and your routine to execute the best possible shot you can. But with, but off there, it's, uh, I wouldn't say let your hair down, if you know what I mean, but it's a, it's a chance to just uh, forget about the, the stresses and the pressure for a moment. Yeah, I do think that um, you need to forget uh, the arrows that you, of course, the bad arrows that you that you shot. You know, you cannot say 100% uh, in in that arrow because you already shot it, shot it. You cannot do anything about it, um, and just think about what you can do in the future to make it better. Um, sometimes we try really hard, but um, sometimes what we do is just what we normally do is just what we need. You know. Well, Cordo's now got to put that miss out of her mind. There she is right there. And uh, put that behind her. There's the French team that won the men's under 18 gold medal. Trying to see if the under 21 women's can do the same. It's going to be tough now. They're four points, four set points to nil down. And Lopez not happy as 20 seconds ticks by. that kiss the bottom line I reckon it might have yeah I think that's what France needs uh, to feel a little bit more confident and also these arrows also really really good um, like I said you cannot be um, negative you need to be always positive and keep fighting until the last arrow especially with these windy conditions Good first arrow there from Oh Yijin. Now we have Yum Hye Jung, who's getting close now to winning her second gold medal of these games, but now she's just taking a deep breath, trying to compose herself. Well, it happens. So that's going to put her teammates under time pressure as well. That was just the second arrow of the set. Xiu Bo Yun. Wanting to get good scores on the scorecard, and now they'll look for a way to make up the time. So it's a one point game. It looks like the wind is affecting a little bit more on the French side. I feel like uh, Korea, even though the second archer wasn't uh, ready to shoot the arrow, uh, they are like uh, keeping it a little bit more in the center, a little bit more in the middle. Um, on the French side, all the archers look a little bit insecure, um, but understandable with these windy conditions. Cordo, last arrow here for France in the set. Needs a big score and she's not comfortable on the shooting line. Now she unleashes and gets an eight. And France lock in provisional score of 47. Remember, there's a little bit of doubt about that second arrow. But anyway, here is Korea with a big chance. 
to close this match out now. Only 14 points required. They might need one more just for that little bit of insurance. 15 really to make it absolutely certain. Yum on the shooting line. There's eight, so seven will definitely secure the gold here for Korea. And it's Yu Bo Yun for the win. Oh, yes, that's how to do it, and it's Korea who have the gold medal. And their amazing record in women's teams archery just rolls on. They've won the under-18s and the under-21s here in Limerick. And they have finished with a flourish, a fantastic last arrow. And it's happy days in the Korean camp. Really nice to see the Korean coach uh, hugging the archer. They are always uh, really game phase on, you know. Uh, it was really nice to see the excitement from all the archers because it is really difficult to shoot your arrows. So um, I'm pretty sure when you shoot it, then it, it really feels like a big achievement while it's not uh, in a practice or an easy, uh, not windy day, you know. Well, it wasn't Francis Day. They were fantastic at the last World Youth Championships. But the final set score there, 52 to 48, was the final score in that last set. And Korea win, and Yum Hye Jung becomes a double gold medalist at these World Archery Youth Championships, having also won the mixed teams gold medal earlier. So. She'll be on top of the podium again shortly, because that's the next thing coming up in just a moment is the victory ceremony before we get into the men's under-21s competition. But Korea, Gabby, just that, again, on the day, that little click or two above. Uh, it indeed looked super, super nice. The, all the archers with a really quick, quick timing um, that helped them a little bit as well. Uh, that uh, makes them not be so affected by the win. Um, I feel like on the other side, uh, France look a little bit unsecure, a little bit uh, more nervy, but it's understandable. I feel like all the all what's happening in the in the shooting line at the moment is not easy, and happy to see them also winning the silver. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So Korea first, France second, and Poland, of course coming from the shadows to win the bronze medal. And we will have those uh, that victory ceremony for you shortly. Just a little look ahead to what's coming up in the men's. We're going to have Japan playing France for the bronze medal in the under-21 men's recurve teams competition and the Chinese and Korean teams battling for gold. So stay with us. So you've just won gold at uh, Limerick. How do you feel? 오늘 단체전에서 우승하셨습니다. 우승하신 소감이 어떠신가요? 열심히 연습하고 왔는데 연습한 만큼 해된 것 같아서 너무 뿌듯하고 좋습니다. We practiced a lot before coming here in Korea, so I think we all deserve uh, for the victory of today. So I'm quite happy with the result. And uh, I'm not sure if you're used to these conditions with the wind. There were hats flying off, there were arrows going all over the place. Uh, how did you combat the wind? 
어, 경기하면서 그 바람이 엄청 많이 불고 이 어려운 컨디션에서 있고 막 바, 모자도 날라가고 그 화살도 또 다른 데로 날라가고 그랬었는데 어떻게 그런 것들 다잘 극복하시면서 경기를 잘 마무리하셨나요? 어, 바람은 다 똑같이 부눌어서 똑같은 환경이라 생각하고 가볍게 생각했고 뭐 극복하면서 타임 짧게 쏘면서 썼습니다. I think this hard condition is not for only Korean team, uh, for everyone. So I just focus on our own shooting, and I think we made it uh, actually. And so yeah, a big uh, win in a Korean shirt. What are your plans for the future going forward? 오늘 단체전 우승을 하셨고 앞으로 이번 대회나 또 다른 그 미래 어떤 목표가 있으신지요? 비록 이제 스무 살이 돼서 이런 뉴스 세계 대회를 나갔지만 더더큰 선수가 되어서 올림픽에 나가는 게 저희의 목표입니다. 더 열심히 하도록 노력하겠습니다. This is youth world championship, so hopefully I I get another chance in the Olympic games in the in the future as an individual and team. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. 감사합니다. Yeah. Oh, great stuff there from the three Koreans there, Oh Seo and Yom. Yeah, really nice to see that they are really thinking about the Olympics, you know, like that's uh, that's a focus from all the archers. This is the next upcoming generation under 21. I'm pretty sure we will see a little bit more of them in the future. Yeah, absolutely. It's a touched on cap. It's so competitive, isn't it? Within Korea to get a spot in the national team, it's uh, it'd be a great, uh, great exercise to actually have a look at their trials and how rigorous they are and uh, go through the process. Do you have any knowledge on on that front? I had the chance to shoot a competition in Korea back in August last year. Um, shooting my personal best and uh, being on place number 21 24 i'm sorry so um i consider myself an okay archer but that's just uh, their level is just above the rest i feel like uh, korea has a lot of history not only in the olympics and world championships as well um so yeah i think that uh we can expect high scores from them always always especially in women's side yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, even though we might know mu not know much about them, that we know one thing that's for sure is that when they're on the shooting line, they are good archers. Time now for the victory ceremony, the under-21 women. And uh, Poland coming out to get their bronze medal. Great achievement for them. And uh, the French and Korean teams out there as well. about this Polish team. Fantastic effort to beat uh, teams ranked above them to come through to win the bronze medal. They beat the USA, the fourth seeds, the Indians, the fifth seed, and then China, the sixth seed in the bronze medal match. And they were ranked only 13th after the qualification. So well done to those three archers. They performed brilliantly together Claudia Plaza, Alexandra Obtoba, and Barbara Gritschbeck. Thoroughly deserve their bronze medals. Amazing to see that they uh, kept working together as a team. Really nice hearing from them.
here as the French team didn't defend their title, this team from two years ago, but couldn't really get going in the windy conditions. Still great effort from Amelie Cordo, Caroline Lopez, Victoria Sebastian to medal for the second straight. Youth, Olympi uh, youth uh, championships, rather. Well, good to see them smiling, putting behind them the disappointment of not performing at their best in that final. Gold medal, Republic of Korea. Got another gold for Korea. Oh Yi Chin, Xiao Bo Yun, and Yum Ye Jiong who wins her second gold medal of these championships. And will she sweep all three gold medals with the individual to come as Yum just gets her gold medal now? That will be an amazing achievement if she can do it. Gold to Korea in the under 21 women's teams recurve competition. Well, congratulations to all nine archers on the podium. The three from Poland who won bronze. The French team that uh, grabbed the silver and the three Koreans who are the gold medal winners here in 2023 in Limerick. just leaves the two batches to come in the session and it's the turn now of the under 21 men's bronze medal match coming up between Japan and France and the gold medal between China and Korea as we conclude the recurve team's action for this year stay with us
please welcome the coaches and judges to the field of play. Time now for the bronze medal match in the recurve under 21 men's teams competition here at the Muratari Youth Championships in Limerick Island, Japan playing France. For third place. Wins for Japan so far over Poland in Chinese Taipei, but they lost to China in the semis by six set points to two. And France beat Italy and the USA before losing to Korea in the semi-finals five set points to three. Should be a good match this one. Japan qualified in fourth place in the qualifications. France way down in tenth, but have come through nicely. On target one, representing Japan, Yuya. So here we go. One of these uh, archers, Ivan Baratio, is a three time winner at the last World Archery Youth Championships. Gabby, gold in the individuals, silver in the teams, and also a bronze in the mixed teams. So he is one to watch in 2023. Yeah, wow. He has a lot of experience. Uh, I have the, I have had the chance to see him also in other international competition together with Nicolas Bernardi. Um, I think that they're going to put a great show today um, together with the Japanese team as well. They also qualify pretty good and I'm pretty sure that they are going to uh, give them a good fight. So here we go. As Japan get the match underway. Luke Sarah to start. These windy conditions continue. There's Funahashi. A good start for Kawasaki. He was the lowest ranked in qualification of these three Japanese archers. The other two, Funahashi and Saito, qualified inside the top 10 for the individual competition. And Saito finishes that first rotation with an eight. Lots of support for both teams here. <laughs> Roman Viali. <laughs> All three of these uh, French archers quite low in the qualifications for the individual competition. Two Gabby, 31st, 41st and 51st. But, gee, they've combined beautifully in the team's competition today. Uh, I definitely think that they uh, they have a lot more to give. Uh, probably the windy conditions weren't, uh, were, were difficult for them. I feel like um, 
this week is has been a little bit difficult with the wind. I have, like we see right now, Japan started like, a little bit on the left, and now uh, they probably adjust, but the windy conditions are, like are still um, affecting them. I hope they manage to stay in the game and don't get too crazy about the wind. There's the first 10 for the Japanese team, hit by Kawasaki Yota, 19-year-old. Last arrow coming up now for Saito Formia. He's 68 in the world rankings at the moment. Just outside the 10 zone. Great finish there, 10-9 for Japan. But that five on their scorecard with the first arrow might come back to bite them. Because France have a big chance to grab the first set here. Wow, well, that chance has just diminished. A smidgen with that six from Barato. A bit of catching up here to do for Viali and Bernardi. Great arrow from Viali. It looks like they're complementing each other pretty well. Uh, that's what you need in the team matches. Oh, Bernardi with a 10-2. Fantastic from those two Frenchmen to end the first set. That's how to do it, Gabby. Brilliant stuff. Uh, it looks like Nicolas is showing his uh, experience in the senior team. All uh, three French archers really vocal about uh, how they feel when they shoot their arrows. Um, it's really nice to see that they uh, are excited and that they feel pretty confident about their shooting. Well, Bernardi has uh, had to, he's been to two previous World Archery Youth Championships hasn't medaled to date. So maybe it's going to be third time lucky for the 20 year old. Yeah. 93 in the world rankings at the moment. So in the end, a fairly comfortable win there for France in the first set by four points 53 to 49. Lead this contest by two points to nil. There's a rowdy crowd in for this match. Yeah, we have seen the archers having contact with the fans there in the tribune. I feel like uh, all the archers need to take um, really serious what they are doing, but it's also good to enjoy some time. Japan shouldn't be too discouraged. Some reasonable stuff in that first set. You know, that uh, wind today, 30 kilometers an hour. That's nine meters a second, gusting to 15 meters a second here at the venue at uh, Limerick. Japan are going to need more arrows in the yellow zone than what they're producing at the moment. They've just had to two, in, in fact, three in the yellow zone from yeah. Seven arrows. That uh, another one in the yellow. Just only just though from uh, Kawasaki. So 25 for Japan. <laughs> wow, that's an interesting tactic for Ivan Barato. Tries again. I think it's pretty interesting to see that the archers are taking their time to shoot their arrows. Uh, 
they are doing it when they feel more prepared for it, and that's really nice to see. I feel like uh, there's no wrong, con wrong decisions at this time. Just um, trusting yourself is what is going to get you uh, far. Aviali there. Two tens in the first set, six to start the second. One of five from Bernardi. That's unusual. Just about to say, Gabby, it feels like the wind is, uh, I wouldn't say died down, but it's less gusty now, but maybe it is still very challenging. I was about to say the same. I thought that the, it looked uh, like the wind was affecting uh, the archers a little bit less, uh, but it's probably not affecting the archers anymore, but the arrows a little bit more. Big chance for Japan here to claim the set that is good from Kawasaki so 10 here from Saito Fumiya and just as I say that if we just talk about the wind not gusting as much a huge gust of wind comes through the shooting range here and Saito now for Japan here if he can get a 10 oh he's just Aside, just a straight by less than a couple of centimeters. But 50 to 20, Japan should be feeling confident of claiming the second set. And they have now with that first arrow not going into the 10 from Barato. Yeah, I think that France can only take these three arrows to prepare for the next ma the next set and uh, make the best out of it. Wow, Viali bounces back from that six. That's his third ten from four arrows. And another six there for Bernardi, was it a five in fact? Two fives on from Bernardi. That's unusual. But it's a tight scoreline now. Two set points each between Japan and France. You're watching the bronze medal match in the other 21 men's recurve teams here at the World Archery Youth Championships. I feel like the French side uh, was struggling a little bit with the time as well, not only the wind. Uh, yeah, I feel like sometimes it's better to release your arrow and hope for the best uh, than just get a bad feeling about not shooting an arrow. Uh, on the uh, it, yeah, on the Japanese side, um, Pumilla Saito also has some work of experience. I had the chance to shoot against him uh, in the World Cup in China uh, early this year. Um, he's showing us that he has experience, he's showing us that he can do it and that Team Japan is 100% there to what the win is uh, bringing them. Big support there for the French team after a disappointing second set where they were outscored by 50. 2.44. But the beauty of the set scoring system in recurve archery is that it means nothing now. It's all about the next arrow. And the next set. As the push for victory continues. Japan to start the third set. Out there again is Funahashi. Yuya. And that's how to start a set. Really nice to see how excited he stepped out of the line. Uh, that's, of course, going to give uh, some confidence to the next teammate. Um, now, with windy conditions, I feel like he prefers to wait a little bit. But I'm pretty sure that that X is uh, just what they need. Wow, that's a, 
That pause was worth waiting for. It's a good score, so Japan start well in set number three. And they're enjoying themselves as well. You could also see Saito asking uh, his teammate where he was aiming at because he sees that clearly that was uh, really good. So a big breath here for the French team. They want to up their standards big time from the second set. Now, Iban Baratio is not looking comfortable on the shooting line again. Scored two nines in the last set. He's going okay. He's, uh, you can tell he's not comfortable, Gabby, but he's, uh, he's smart enough to hit the reset button on more than one occasion so far. Yeah, it looks like he has everything under control. We have seen a little bit of a struggle uh, shooting the first arrow. Uh, that can be, shooting the first arrow can also be a little bit uh, difficult for us, especially when you don't know uh, where to aim. Uh, but it looks like they are handling it pretty well. Well, Bernardi with two fives in the last set. Sigh of relief as he Bangs in a 10. <laughs> and instantly the body language looks much better. Yeah, they're staying together. They are... Uh, wow. Wow, this is just amazing. It looks like uh, the wind is, is 10 times stronger than two minutes ago. And they are just shooting 10 after 10 after 10. Amazing thing to see. Well, let's see if it continues. as Kawasaki Yota. It's on the shooting line now. Well, it uh, takes the Japanese to 42. Got to get away. Quick shot, and Saito almost gets another 10. Plenty of drama there for the Japanese team. They lock in a score of 51, which is actually an improvement on their last set which was 50. Well, still a chance here for France. Now, Viali's been great. Other than one loose arrow, he's been fantastic with three tens and a nine. Oh, and there's another loose one from him. And now they just need a 10 to, uh, to tie it. It's a big error for Bernardi. And he can't seal it either. It was just too much pressure on the time for Bernardi and for Viali after that reload from Barato on the very first arrow. So Japan take the lead heading into the last set. Uh, it looks like uh, both teams are struggling a little bit on time. Uh, both teams look like they are trying to stay positive. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, it's not easy to shoot uh, there right now. Uh, you could hear the crowd uh, counting down. I think they were doing uh, difficult stuff, difficult stuff. Yeah, that replay said it all. So 51-47, score in that set. Japan now in the box seat. They lead 4-2 with one set to play. France square the set, will be off to a shoot-off. We have one more match to come after this one. It's going to be the gold medal match in the other 21s between China and Korea. All ahead of France here. In the under-21 men's teams recurve final here at the World Archery Youth Championships of 2023. They trailed by four set points to two.
need to win the set to take it to a shoot off. Barato will be very pleased, Gabby, to get that shot away first time and give his team valuable seconds that they didn't have in the last set. Uh, it looked like he was a little bit more confident uh, this arrow, starting this starting arrow. I feel like uh, that's what the French team needs to, yeah, to get a chance to win the bronze medal. Well, Viali's form has just abandoned him a touch with back-to-back -to -back sixes. Well, that's more like it from Bernardi. Gets the French team back on track. Yeah, I feel like they are complementing each other. When one of them has a bad arrow, the other one makes it up with a 10 or with a 9. That's really nice to see. Unahashi, he knew before the arrow hit the target that that was a straight. You can hear the... Oh, after he released. Didn't like it. See if Kawasaki can back up his buddy. He can. So Saito Fumiya. Now looking for composure. He didn't like the release, Gabby, but eight's not too bad. No, he looked really happy after that eight. I feel like he had a little bit of um, struggle there. Um, looked like he wasn't ready to shoot uh, the arrow on the first uh, the first time he pulled, uh, but the second arrow, the second time he pulled, he looked like uh, he was ready for it, just like is um, uh, Ivan. Ivan Barato with a 10 there, that's a big score. Now Viali. Oh, he lost the clicker there. He didn't release the arrow. Whoa! Stop it! <laughs> that's for sure a recovery after the six he shot the la the for in the first rotation. Um, that's This is what France needed. Wow, that's a big end there. A big set for them, 54 points. Easily the best from them in the match. And now Japan, that means, that one right there means we're going to go to a shoot-off to decide the bronze medal with a fantastic set there from France. Three tens and a couple of nines in there. Kawasaki, that's his loosest arrow of the match. So France win the first and last sets, and Japan win the middle two. And we're going to have our first shoot-off of the day. And he's very high there with a six, so disappointing end for Japan, but there's nothing to gain from those last two arrows, so it's going to be a shoot-off. And neither of these teams have been involved in shoot-offs in this competition. So always fun to have a shoot-off, Gabby. Yeah, I think that for us is, is really nice to watch, but for the archers, I don't know if they want to be in that situation. We see a really nice recovery from France there. Um, uh, not so good match, uh, not so good uh, set from Japan, but I'm pretty sure that the shoot off is going to show uh, their level and is, uh, yeah, is going to show us who is going to be the winner. I'm really interested. What do you think? Who who do you think that uh, has been? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't ask me that question. I don't know. <laughs> who who do you think tough. that? Yeah. Who do you? What would you do in these circumstances? I feel like 
I'm telling you what I would do, but I, I don't know, like, what what pattern do you see or what do you think that it would be uh, the A plan for these kind of competitions with a lot of wins? Well, it, seem, it seems that the French team can get on a roll to me. Like, if I go back through their scorecards here, you know, they generally follow up a 10 with another 10 or a 9. And they did that in that last set. Even the start of the fourth set, a third set, 9-9-10 nine, nine, they went before it all went a bit pear-shaped. So if France can get on a bit of a roll here, like if Barato can stand up, get up and bang in a 10, Gabby, the other two seem to thrive off that momentum. So if that happens, look out for that. And Japan have been a bit inconsistent through the match so far. But it all really depends, I think, on how that first arrow goes in. So Barato and for Funahashi. Yeah, I agree. When Ivan looks uh, confident, their teammate, his teammates, they just uh, start shooting temps as well. I hope uh, they can uh, keep it together on, on these three arrows. The same for Team Japan. I think that when they also are just a little bit more fun and a little bit more uh, less serious about what they're doing, uh, that they shoot a little bit better. Um, I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen. Oh, me too. So just that, uh, let's run through how it works in the shoot-offs, of course, in teams competition. One arrow each per archer. Highest cumulative score wins. If uh, the scores are tied, it's closest to the centre. Who has the arrow closest to the centre? So that's why a 10 is really important. It's going to be Funahashi Yuya to start the shoot-off for Japan. Bronze medal at stake here for the winner here at the World Archery Youth Championships. Well, let's see Barato and find his form. 10 with his last arrow. Just waits for that win to hopefully die down. Doesn't seem it will. So he loads up. So it's a point advantage to France after the first arrows. Now stepping up, it's Kawasaki Yota. We need to remember both teams have their uh, two most experienced archers at the end of their rotation. So uh, Saito and Nicolas Bernardi are going to be closing the match. I think that's going to be uh, really nerve wracking for both of them. Really nice eggs from Team Japan there. Brilliant stuff from Kawasaki. Now Roman Viali. Oh, that's big right there. It's just a six. So huge advantage here for Japan. They're up 18-15 with one arrow left. He just gets it away in time, but that won't just be enough yet, Gabby. It's 25. France are on 15. So it comes down to Bernardi. If he gets a 10, oh. he can't. He can't. It's going to be Japan who have got the bronze medal in the shoot-off. 25 to 21. Wow, what drama there, Gabby, is the buzzer sounded the time counter down on both teams. Yeah, it looked like uh, Japan was uh, struggling a little bit with time there. He decided to shoot the arrow. He hits a seven. Um, which was enough to win the the bronze medal. Um, a little bit uh, sad for Team France. Uh, they started with a really good arrow, uh, but it was amazing to see this match. We started like end uh, one for France and two for Japan, and the Team France managed to recover at the end, uh, but it was not enough, right? That's right. 25 21, the confirmed final scores in that uh, shoot off. And that
that big second arrow ended up being the big one for Kawasaki and Japan. That was the one that really sealed it. And it was an X2. So well done to Japan. They win the bronze medal, just beating France. That leaves just the one match. And it's the gold medal match. And unfortunately for France, it wasn't to be. And there was the moment that Japan realized that victory was theirs. Celebrations for Funahashi, Kawasaki and Saito. Stand by for the gold medal match between China and Korea. That's coming in just a moment. Last match of the session is the gold medal match in the other 21 men's between China and Korea. China finished the top qualifiers, Korea third. China have beaten Denmark, Germany and Japan on their way to the final. And good wins too for Korea, Australia, Ukraine and France. Can Korea win their third gold medal of the day? their quest. On target number one, representing China, Argentan. <laughs> Li Mengju. <laughs> Li Wanju. <laughs> On target number two, representing Korea. So here we go, China against Korea for the gold medal. <coughs> Li Mingyi is uh, looking for a second medal opportunity here in Limerick, just missing out on the bronze in the mixed competition, but one. Jiong Hyuk is going for his second gold. He won the mixed teams with Yom Hyung Jong, who won gold earlier today in the women's team. So can the man on your right of the screen there, he's starting off here for Korea. Can he go double gold as well? He's going to start the gold medal match. What a way to get cracking. Makes it look so easy, Gabby. Uh, it does, it does indeed. Um, like we know, Korea has such a good level. They are like so strong together. Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to see the same we saw um, on the women's side. Um, they look pretty solid. It looks also like the wind is a little bit less strong at the moment. Or maybe that's just me uh, being here uh, at home, not thinking about the wind. Wow. Great arrow there from Song and Jun. To end the first rotation on 28 points. And now the Chinese team. This is Li Mengqi. Start from him. This is Ayadian Sang. 
19 years of age. And now Kin Wang Yu, youngest of these three Chinese archers. Lucy Arrow from him. It's a big advantage here for Korea after the first rotation. Three point advantage. Yeah, that looked good. The moment he released that arrow. Imposing yeah, it, start here from the Koreans. Yeah, it looked like he already knew that that arrow was going to land in the tent, just like this one did. Well, this for the win in the first set here from Song and Jun. Needs an eight or higher. And he gets a nine, so that's the first set in the bank for Korea right there. Four tens from the six arrows. All the arrows just drifting left a touch here from China. previous area definitely looks like a nine off the bow of Lee but regardless of it it's not going to be enough so no tens to China in that first set Gabby and four for Korea yeah it looks like Lee Song and Won uh, uh, weren't affected by the wind I'm pretty sure that one with a little bit of a more experience shooting uh, two days ago, the mixed team uh, could communicate with his teammates what was happening in the uh, finals venue. Uh, on the other side, we also saw Lee uh, that also shot the mixed team. Uh, he also had like two arrows in the yellow. I'm pretty sure that uh, Team China is now going to adjust their side a little bit and hopefully they will be um, landing in a 10 next end. That's right, make some adjustments, come back. Getting no coach in that Chinese team today. Nice and relaxed from uh, the Koreans, and why not too? And why not after a very solid first end, or so set rather, for Korea? 57 to 52, scores confirmed. And uh, now we have the second set. Can Korea carry on with this fantastic start? That is easily the best set of the day, by the way, 57. No one else in any other divisions got close to that. Going to be Lee Minky to start off again. It's sort of like he was laughing about where the arrow ended. He probably uh, adjusts a little bit too much. Uh, but we will see with uh, the next teammates. Look, he probably uh, just did enough to get in the ten. Um, that was an absolutely fantastic arrow right there from Yeri Densung. A better start there for China. 27. Started with 25 in the last set. See if Juan can carry on this amazing form. He can. That's three tens in a row for him. Just like he started in the last set, Lee starts with an eight. 
It looked like he wasn't really happy or he wasn't in the middle when he released the arrow. Ooh, didn't like it, did he? But <laughs> just drops into the nine zone. Yeah, it was indeed the same the same story with that arrow, but it looked like uh, he had it a little bit more. Uh, probably his spin uh, was a little bit more in the middle. Nine. Well, Lee has been all around the 10 zone. He's been left, he's been right, he's been below and high now, and he's just can't quite get in there. This man's arrow last time was a gem. It's that one right in the middle there. Well, China needs something from Kin. He needs to get a 10, really. And he does. That's a great arrow right there. And that gives China a chance. 55 in the set. Wow, that's a really, indeed a really nice score. I'm pretty sure Team Korea is gonna try to. Ooh. <laughs> Little bit difficult start there on the on the Korean side. Well, two tenths required now to share the set, and that's not going to happen. So China are back in this match. That uh, high standard that Korea hit in the first set. Not able to be replicated here. Seven. They're going to have to just put that set behind them, the Korean team, and move on. So it's pretty much been flipped around from the first set. Five point margin for Korea in the first set, four point margin in favor of China in this one. Uh, we see uh, 107, 108. If it would have been a cumulative score, where well, it would be like really close. It is now also really close. Uh, China taking the first, uh, I'm sorry, Korea taking the first uh, set and China taking the second one. It looks to me that they are just shooting really high scores. Uh, of course, uh, with the windy conditions, you know, sometimes it affects uh, one team and the other time affects the other team. But I'm pretty sure that they are uh, both trying to shoot dance and trying to do the best, the best they can. So two set points each now in this gold medal match. Hope you're enjoying it. The under 21 men's recurve team's final between China and Korea. Halfway through the match. One, Jong Hyuk to start off again for Korea. He started off sensationally well with three tens on the trot. He's followed that with an eight and a seven. Yeah, a little bit difficult. His last two arrows uh, look a little, uh, a little bit out of control. But um, his teammate Lee has, of course, uh, a ten there for them to to fix a little bit what uh, what happened. You know. <laughs> exactly, Lee. That's the second 10 of the match. Now Song, drifting a little right all of a sudden. Maybe that wind just died down a touch. Yeah, it looked like they are struggling a little bit with the wind. It looks like uh, it came from the same direction. Um, Team China probably saw what was happening with Team Korea and they aim a little bit on the other side to, to see, but it landed on the other side. Well, 
Head down Sung, remember, had that arrow of the match so far, taking out the spider in the second set. One of just two tens that China have scored so far. So it's advantage to Korea after the first rotation. In fact, the scores are tied. Of course, that's seven from one. And there's an eight. So he's not nailing his shot as he was earlier. Yeah, it looks like they're struggling a little bit with the wind. Um, Lee a little bit less than than one, uh, but let's see what uh, Song can uh, give to the team. It seems to really come and go, doesn't it? The wind, it's very hard to judge. And tell you what, that's a great arrow there from Song. Much needed for Korea as they go to 52 in this third set. It's a big chance for China to take a 4-2 lead. Three nines will do it. At least they share the set. Wow. Well, we feel this is a big moment in the match right now. I think Sung. Got to get this arrow away. He does okay in the end. Uh, racing to the shooting line, Kim Wang Yu. He needs a 10 to win this set. Oh boy, it's going to be Korea's set in the end. Oh no. We've seen that a lot, Gabby, haven't we, where the last arrow is a, a huge bearing on the outcome. Yeah, I feel like uh, the first arrow, you only, you don't only need to worry about the wind uh, and the conditions, but you also need to uh, focus on shooting your arrow because a lot of teams are running out of time. We have seen a little bit here with uh, Korea and China that they prefer not to shoot the arrow sometimes, so they let down they breathe a little bit and they prepare for for the shot it is a little bit difficult to know what's going to happen you know every single arrow is a different story we see a lot of arrows left a lot of arrows right it's just guessing what you need to aim and just keep fighting for it i i wouldn't know what to do in that uh, circumstances yeah, didn't like it, and he knows too. He's missed a big chance there to keep his team, uh, give his team a, a win in that set, potentially tie it. And unfortunately, can that, 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 that seven has uh, lost the set for his team. So that means it's four set points to two. Korea winning that set 52 50. So last set of the match, Korea need to tie the set or win it. And the gold medal will be theirs. China need to win it to take it to a shoot off. And that's a great start right there from Lee Minky. Yeah, that's what they need to, uh, to get in the match, uh, to be able to get in the shoot off. Um, I have seen that it has been a little bit difficult for the teams that close. The team that starts also need to worry a lot about what the other team is shooting. So um, it can be that China is going to take this chance and that they are going to do everything is possible uh, to get in a shoot off. Well, he's drifted right again, but at least he's grabbed the eight line this time. So 27 for China. That's okay. Nine. 
on with that nine. China, remember, must win the set to take the match to a shoot-off for the gold medal. Lee is next up for Korea. Yes, just grabbed that line, hasn't it? So, fantastic arrow. That's his third 10 of the match. And now, it looked like Song, who had... Sorry, Gabby. No, it looked like he was struggling a little bit with the wind, but where the arrow landed didn't show how much he was struggling with the wind. Yeah, I was just about to say, that last arrow and that last 10 from Song was a gem. So one point lead for Korea after the first rotation. One arrow left per archer. Lee with that 10. He needs another one now. And he's got one. Back-to-back 10s -back for the 20-year-old at just the right time of the match. So he's done all he can. Now it's up to his teammates. Looks like the wind's picking up a little bit. Yeah, Ding Sun. <laughs> so last arrow of the match here for China. Uh, in with two nines, so it's going to be China. Fifty-five, I think. We'll see. We'll just wait and see. Is John one rather? That's a nine. Now Lee, who's been great, really finding his group, but he just misses the ten there. So it's a nine. for the score here but this could be the gold medal winning arrow right here for Song and Jun nine to win it oh yes he's got it I think he just grabbed it I think Song and Jun has won it for Korea smiles in the Korean camp we're gonna wait for confirmation Couple of line lickers in that set. But I reckon that Korea have got it. Might have even grabbed it by two points. Six set points to four. Six set points to two, rather. Be another goal for Korea here. As the scores have just been ratified at the at the target. Korea score's been confirmed. There's one, two, three nines there, an eight and a seven. Just uh, looking at the arrows, but it's looking good for Korea. Looks like Team Korea is trying to stay a little bit positive to um, to just in case they're gonna shoot a shoot off. Um, we can see there that Team Korea won. <laughs> That's right. The armor's out, and Korea have got it in the bag, and they have won it, 54 to 53, in that final score. So there is the gold medal to Korea, their third of the day. They win both the under. 21. In fact, that was a tied score, so we uh, a lot of confusion there near the end. But in the end, they win it by five points to three, although our scorecard here is 6-2. But we'll get the confirmed score for you shortly. So in the end, it doesn't matter, Gabby. It's Korea's title. Yeah, definitely. They showed amazing. They start with 57. 51, 52, 54. Um, in these windy conditions, those scores are 
really, really good. Team China, I feel like they also shot really good. They managed to keep all their arrows in the uh, in the red. Um, I feel like uh, what happened to them a little bit is that they shot a little bit less than some Team Korea, but um, amazing shoot from them as well. Uh, it was really a really nice match to watch. I feel like all the arches were really, really positive, and especially Team Korea. You can see that they were celebrating their nines, they were celebrating their eights. Uh, probably in other, in not windy conditions, it would have been different, but they were enjoying it. All right, we got it. In the end, there the uh, scores were tied at the end, 54 each. So it was a shared set, but Korea win the match by five set points to three. And uh, congratulations have got to go out here to Won Jong Hyuk, one of their archers. Gabby, he's won two gold medals now. And uh, having won the mixed teams title as well. So double gold medalist is Won Jong Hyuk, joining Yeom Hyung Jung as well as a double gold medalist here in Limerick. So you've just won the gold in Limerick. How are you feeling? 오늘 단체전에서 우승하셨습니다. 우승 소감을 간단하게 간단하게 말씀해 주십시오. 팀들이랑 같이 함께 해줘 가지고 너무 좋았고 다 같이 믿 믿고 해 가지고 너무 좋았습니다. I'm happy to win the gold medal match uh, as a team. So we trust and rely on each other. So it's a good result for our team. Great, and it was a very strong start. Then a few tight games, and then a great finish for the victory. Oh, 처음에 시작을 강하게 시작했는데 그 다음에 타이가 됐었다가 다시 마지막에는 이제 이기셨는데 어떤 경기였었나요? 어 처음에는 좀 바람을 잘못 읽다가 이제 후반 되니까 좀 바람도 좀 읽고 또팀 팀들과도 이제 좀 합의가 잘 맞아갖고 좀잘된것 같습니다. At the beginning of the match, I couldn't find real, really the aiming point, but uh, it, I, I was getting used to the environment. And uh, during the match, as, as the match was gone, uh, we made a great co combination within the team, so uh, we made it. And then taking gold today, what is, what is, uh, what's in front of you? What are you hoping for your future? 오늘 단체전 금메달을 따셨고 남은 경기에 대한 목표나 아, 계획이 있으신가요? 어, 누구나 개인전 금메달 다 따고 싶겠지만 저희 세명다 최선을 다해서 경기에 임하도록 하겠습니다. I think winning the gold medal uh, for the individual is for the goal for everyone. So uh, we gotta do our best for the individual. Brilliant. Thanks very much, guys. Congratulations. Well, congratulations to the three Korean archers, gold medalists here. And a great day for Korea. Gabby, three golds, one silver in recurve teams competition. Yeah, we we know that they are really strong. They show us that they're really strong. I find really funny that Lee was saying that he couldn't find the middle in the beginning of the match, but I just see uh, 10 after 10 after 10. It's really funny that, that he has another um, opinion about it. But um, I mean, amazing. They all shot really good. Um, really happy for them. Yes, indeed. So just the victory ceremony to come before we wrap it up. Today's action, this ends the team's competitions with just the individuals to come over the next couple of days. Compound tomorrow and then recurve individuals coming on the last day. So here comes our last victory ceremony of the day. There's uh, Japan come out, China and Korea. 
in the under 21 recurve men's teams competition. Yeah, great effort by the Japanese. Prevailing in the only shoot-off of the day over France. Winning that shoot-off 25 to 21. Great effort there from Funahashi Yuya, Kawasaki Yota and Saito Fumiya. Show good resilience in the tough conditions too. Yeah, wasn't it really nice to see how they recover uh, from <laughs> from the the sets they lost? It's really funny. I see some confusion there. Uh, Team Korea thought that they could already stand on the podium. I'm pretty sure that they cannot wait to stand there on top of the podium. Yeah, yeah, they were trigger happy there. The Korean team. Good effort from the Chinese too. They were the top qualifiers, but uh, just couldn't find their form. The Koreans just pipping them a little too good on the day once again, as we've seen over the years in several teams competitions. Thought the Chinese though had a good, had performed pretty well in this final. Li Ming Ki, Kin Wang Yu, and An Den Sang. China win the silver. Gold medal, Republic of Korea. Congratulations to Lee Jiong Han, Song In Jun, and Wong Jiong Hyuk all going to be archers to watch in the individual competition. It's going to be fiercely competitive. And there's Wan getting his gold medal, his second of these games, after getting also one in the mixed teams competition. All the hard training and long hours of practice come to fruition for this Korean team once again. Winners of the recurve under 21 men's gold medal.
Well, another great competition here at the World Archery Youth Championships in 2023 with Korea winning gold in the recurve under 21 men's team competition with China picking up the silver and it was Japan pipping France for the bronze. Well, I've had some great action here today for the recurve men's and women's competitions in teams. All the individuals to come now over the next couple of days for you with the compound coming tomorrow and then the recurve individuals the next day. Well, individual now, and uh, I gave me a quick word from you on the switch mindset shift from teams to individual. What's the biggest challenge for the archers? Well, I think that all the archers are going to have a little bit more advantage right now just because of the fact that they're going to be shooting a little bit more arrows. I think that that can give you a little bit more feeling in the windy conditions and also uh, in when it's cold. I feel like it's... Um, I feel like we're gonna we're gonna see one of the archers or a couple of the archers that we saw today. They all shot really good. Um, I hope they can just manage and they don't get that crazy about the wind. I feel like the wind is um, killing the vibe. I would say <laughs> a little bit. Um, I feel like some of the teams uh, were a little bit impatient and the teams that managed to stay together and uh, be patient. Um, were the ones that won. I'm pretty sure um, a lot of archers are gonna be uh, here in the finals. Uh, a lot of archers that we saw today, I mean. And um, I just wish them good luck. Yeah, indeed. And of course, all the archers we didn't see too. There's going to be some quality. There is a lot of quality in, you know, uh, in countries like the United States. Great Britain, Penny Healy comes to mind straight away. We haven't seen her on the TV coverage just yet, but she's been competing in the mixed teams and the women's teams as well. She is going to be one of the favorites, if not the favorite to win the uh, women's recurve individual, right? Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Penny being the number one, uh, number one archer ranked in the world. Um, I think that she's going to be really strong. Uh, there's also other archers that hasn't made it to the finals that are also really strong that are in the top 10 in the world. Uh, Casey Caulfield is also there. Uh, on the men's side, uh, some of the Dutch archers as well. Um, I'm pretty sure they're going to give us a show. I'm pretty sure that uh, they're going to show us what they've been working the last few months and the last few years. And hopefully we see them winning medals, of course. Indeed. And in the meantime, those celebrations here with the team's competitions coming to a conclusion today and Team Korea with three golds and a silver, a pretty good day for them today. So let's have a look at and recap for you. What's happened today in recurve teams action, under 18 women starting. Congratulations to Chinese Taipei who beat France to win the bronze medal, six set points to two. And then Korea won the first of their gold medals in the gold medal match against China. Also by that score, six set points to two. Very good effort from them, tough conditions all day. Then we move through to the men's and we had surprise Bronze medalists or contenders, Colombia come through, but they were outclassed by this uh, red hot Indian team on the day. India winning all three sets to win six set points to nil. In the gold medal match, France were the only team to defeat Korea today in the under 18 gold medal match. So congratulations to them. They won by five set points to three. Not much in that match with France just coming through nicely with those three archers doing very good things as they enjoyed singing their national anthem. Then we went through the under-21s, the bronze medal match in the women's with between Poland and China. Poland, the 13th seed, coming all the way through to compete and win six set points to two. Fantastic performance 
one of the real highlights of the day. And then Korea winning the last two gold medals, starting with a win over France, shutting them out six set points to nil in the under-21 women's final. That French team, which were all gold medalists at the last Youth World Championships, just couldn't get going today against this Korean team. Japan and France played out the bronze medal match in the under-21s. France had their moments. And in the end, a very good last set saw the match go to a shoot-off. Very good shooting from Viali at times, but there was the win for Japan in the shoot-off, 25 to 21. And then the last match, as we've just seen, it was Korea too strong for China in the under-21 men's gold medal match. Even though the last set was tied at 54 each, it was enough for Korea to get over the line and win by five set points to three to wrap up their third gold medal of the day. So that wraps up the Recurve Teams action for 2023. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, Scabby. We'll catch you in two days for the individual Recurve finals. Looking forward to it. See you in two days. I'm ready for it. In the meantime, though, we've got compound individuals coming tomorrow. We hope you can join us then.